And now, the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, that is Chuck D. And the public enemy. That I means call, it's the bonfire. I'm calling Charles D. Charles D. Mm-hmm. Comedy Central Radio, Series XM95, Big J Okerson, Dan Soder. We are new but not live. Yeah, we're in the past but also in the future. Also in the future. Mind bending um, bonfire reality. I, it's like Terminator 1. I saw uh, I saw Chuck D last night. I saw the Prophets of Rage show. How was it? In Barclays. They did most, if you don't know, Prophets of Rage is uh, it's Chuck D and Be Real. Be Real from Cypress Hill. Uh, and they're the front men of the band is Rage Against the Machine. Mm-hmm. which Super is, group. It's a super group. But they play 90% Rage Against the Machine songs. And you realize how much you need that super, super pissed off uh, Indian that is Zach De La Rocha. Zach De La Rocha. You need him. Like those screams at the end of those songs are supposed to get you all pumped up. Oh! Yeah, absolutely. Let me. I'm going to introduce our guest here because we're just going to jump right in. Fuck we're yeah. Jump, we're going to dive in here. And it's so cool. He was our first guest ever on the bonfire. And he is back to kick some more ass, everybody. The hilarious David Tell is here Thanks with us. Thanks for having me, guys. And that's that, for being that, here. That intro made it sound like you're wearing a leather jacket. Well, I like <laughs> that I was the first guest. Yeah, you were. of and course. Look how look how the show has grown, and both you guys have grown, both you know, physically and emotionally. I'd say <laughs> as oh. a team. Oh, absolutely. Great. We've turned corners. We've had ups. We've had downs. Even you mean on grown, that Chuck you mean D, uh, physically, like uh, like muscular. Like I've got muscular. It looks yeah, like yeah. Me. Absolutely. Thanks, thanks, guy. I would straight up just call you barrel chested. Like, look at all this banter you guys are having. In the beginning, <laughs> it wasn't anything like that. You think you're it's driving like two to work? Sad sacks of shit. Yeah. <laughs> You think you're driving no to work in contact? Dayton. Oh, not at all. <laughs> Usually we want to do this on the ISDN line so we don't even have to look at each other. Well, you brought in Dum Dum's lollipops, and nothing's going to make a boyish personality like Dan Soder excited, like sucking on a Dum Dum. I'll tell you this. Right. I'm even swinging my feet on our high chair. <laughs> what do you got? You got what do you got? A butterscotch? Ah, uh, dude, I went peach. Peach. Because I'm feeling myself. These are odd flavors. These I feel are, like. yeah. It's just enough. It's like almost a, well, I'll just say it right now, like, uh, they're the only lollipops that you can get inside instead of the high end, the uh, bubble gum, the blow pop, oh, the blow pop, yeah. Which is a is a that's an ex- that's a commitment. You can you, al- you can always tell in high school who the drug dealer was eventually going to be, because they sold candy in school. We had yeah, like three way. people in our school that would, and it was big thing blow pops. They would go to like Costco, and buy like big things of blow pops and Jolly mm-hmm. Ranchers and all that shit, and they bring them to school in a book bag and they would sell candy all day and they'd make. A fucking gang of money. I didn't really know that you could go to school and also have a business. Is this yeah. a charter school? Or? I feel like you probably... I wonder if, it, if they would have gotten in trouble for it, if they ever did get in trouble for it. Oh, they were selling it I think like you on can't the do down low. Right yeah, school, out of their yeah. backpack. Oh. Out of their backpack. But yeah, but it was, you know, it was like a quarter for a blow pop or 50 cents for a blow pop. Well, then wow. the, the question becomes, who's the first kid to know that the trend has changed and starts selling drugs instead of candy? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's That's like, the real whiz of the group. You know what? The kid I know, I think, just started selling drugs, and he realized it makes people want candy more. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys go in. I got the candy. You got the drugs. It's all going to come Let's in. do this, kiddo. Yeah, yeah, let's talk like we're old gangsters. Um, yeah, we were, uh, Chuck D. What I was impressed by, though, with the Prophets of Rage show is um, that Tom Morello, guitar player for Rage Against the Machine, who is a virtuoso, I mean, really an amazing... Ageless. Amazing guitar player, but not ageless. Damn 52. It. Wow. Um... Surprising, man, because they still fucking rock. Uh, hey, be- I'm 51, dude. Dave, but- we've always said you mm. rock. <laughs> we never stopped saying you did. Although rock. you could be, I, do you think that there is a? You could be an older comic that you can't be an older rock star. Like, is there a weird? Yeah, like, I think it's age? like I think um, I think like uh, comedy ages like professional golf. Where they're like, you can just keep playing. Yeah. And it's not really changes. And then, like, rock music is like football, where you're like, you're going to get killed out there. You <laughs> well, one day, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, and I, keep, I always go back to it because it, it always breaks my heart. But, like, Marilyn Manson yeah. is like, it's done. It's over. I mean, he, he aged out of that shtick, and yes. it looks ridiculous now. He can't do it anymore. And, mm. uh, but oh, yeah, and Christine was smart to bring this up here. But you can see wh- why the, what I was going to say is those songs definitely need this guy. But Tom Morello. Uh, still like rocks. I'm saying he still like has like the energy, that youth energy at 52. Be real from Cypress Hills, 46, and uh, Chuck D, 56 years old. No way. Yeah, and he does dance around on stage though, like like an uncle at a barbecue. It That's is kind of. He is so ingrained in rap that he actually doesn't 
seem to know what to do while music is playing behind. Like, what you do know. you think is the worst crossover? Like um, rock guys trying to dance to rap, or rap guys not knowing how to dance to rock? I, don't I would think it's rock guys trying to dance to rap would be more awkward to watch. Um, no, weirdly enough, like especially now, like the culture, like the way people grow up, like I know as much about the rap of my era as I do about the rock of my era. And you know who you can thank for that? Linkin Park. I was going to say Kid Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, go with the crustiest. But yeah, we have these videos. Watch, you can see the difference in the, what it is and why they kind of need like... Zach De La Roga. This is the Prophets of Rage. This is the this is the new oh, band. Oh no! I dropped my dum dum. No, I'm such a dum dum. We have no volume on that. <laughs> we have Jacob. Jacob's in the board. We're waiting for Lou. Jacob's That's trying to a, figure you it see all that out. Shot? This is like from the drummer's girlfriend. I yeah. love it. Keep baby, it, baby, keep it you look, iron yeah, him. baby, you look so cool when you're drumming, and you're also not fucking sluts. <laughs> oh, this is on Jimmy Kimmel. You're on Jimmy Kimmel. That dude shoulder tattoos. I've always liked the basis tattoos from Rage Against the Machine. Well, cut to the end of it. Go to the end when they start doing all the screaming. Chuck D looks pretty good. Uncle Charles. No, no, no. no. Chuck D looks mm -hmm. great. You want to be like, Uncle Charles, stop yelling. <laughs> Uncle Charles, stop yelling. That's my friend. But you hear that they're just kind of saying this? Yeah. Um, now go to go to Zach De La Rocha doing it. I mean he. Yeah, get down to the end. I'm also a model. Here's buy new jeans. <laughs> Him shirtless. Very young Tom Morello. <laughs> How old is he now? Uh, Zach De La Rocha, yeah. seventy-eight. Uh, he's got he's got to be in his mid forties at least, but he's uh. So now when he says "f you," I won't do what you tell me. He's talking to his uh, nutritionist. Yeah, or he's, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to eat. Yeah. Well, I, I like have sodium. Have the <laughs> I like a sodium-based diet. <laughs> but the thing is, no, he, he's, 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 he's just raging dirt. out at his doctor's office. <laughs> Zach, you have to understand something. Eating late at night is very bad for you. <laughs> Well, Rage dude, against the buffet. It was so, <laughs> it was so uh, white boy fratty. <clears throat> Where? At Rage? At Prophets of Rage. Really? And those guys, just you can see what's funny is those guys that live their lives in cubicles now, just doing their fucking day yeah. jobs, like side parts. The machine won. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, but like they are, they, they were just reliving it. And what's so great about it is watching them is, it, it, I, I said this out loud, I, I meant it, that, uh, the guy standing in front of us who took his shirt on and off 15 times, <laughs> high-fived and hugged everyone around him several times. Yeah. And when I tell you, I feel bad. I think it's because I, I like what I chose to do in life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not not every day is a, a picnic, obviously. Yeah, but, but I mean, you like your job. You like the idea of what you're pursuing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that because of that, I'll never enjoy anything. As much as that guy was enjoying that concert last oh, night. That's true. That yeah. is true. That's his release. Cause and then he, you didn't earn it. That's for sure. It, it's a bummer. Like I, I, well, watch, goes, I watch this guy. I'm like, well, I, I can't sink into it. Like Even a, a concert that I love, yeah. my hands are in my pockets. At very most, maybe hands going, this is mouthing chance. the words. That's I, I mean, these people have are locked down yeah. 23 hours a day, basically, in terms of like jobs, family, commitments, responsibilities. So, do, sure. so when they finally get a chance to like let go, they let go. And they I, I, I love that. I really do love that. Yeah, it was, it was fun but to you know, watch. Because then you, what you don't see is you see that guy take his shirt off 15 times. The 16th time when he puts his shirt on, then he drives home in his van to his mm -hmm. four-year-old son, Ethan, and he's like, Papa, I make mess. And he's like, okay, all right. He's like, fuck you. Yeah. I won't do, do what you tell me. Just throws fuck his four-year-old through the window. What did you do? <laughs> he's As we were saying with all the cops, because there were so many frat boys just in the subway afterwards. Oh, and I, cool. you see, like, the cops are all there. I'm like, uh, like, uh, 2118, I got a rage in process. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I got some real pink rage bubbling up. <laughs> yeah. some rage Before we start the rage, here's some quick rules. Yeah. And then it's like, <laughs> take off your puka shell necklaces. <laughs> it can go right through somebody's neck. If you're going to have flip flops on, yeah. please take them off. I here's don't want anybody needing a broken toe or two. But, man, they, he was so in. And I was like, man, my favorite concert that I would go to today, I, I would not have that emotion towards it. It's um, a bummer. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I, say about- that, I say that happens with comedy. The inevitable thing about comedy, not that I mean, I still love great comedy. But you say it deadens you and inside? laugh at it. Well, what it deadened me to was uh, when I would watch, like growing up, just put on like Evening at the Improv or Caroline's Comedy Hour or Comic mm-hmm. Strip Live would come on network. Late nights, mm-hmm. like whoever, it, it didn't matter. It was like, oh, Dennis Wolfberg's on, sweet. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? Oh, Bruce Baum, oh. Wayne Cotter, nailing it. I got that new five from Caroline Ray. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, like, uh, no shit, man. I mean, like, I remember yeah. like, Caroline Ray's, like, when she was young and did her first HBO half hour. It was such like a... Uh, yeah, but then you watch so much comedy and then you just get, like, you're like, okay. You just start, also, even the people who, sometimes the people who you find really good, you know their recipe... And as I said before, and it's, it's a testament to you, Dave. Uh, you, oh, am I still here? Yeah. Okay. You and uh, <laughs> you and Patrice. You were dumb, dumb digging. We didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah, so, I'm trying to. Think, you know, I think it was Robert Kelly. Who, well, what are you talking about? Like you're talking about like um, watching watching comedy as a fan or as a comic? Oh, as, I'm, I'm saying watching it as a comic uh-huh. who was like. Just a mega fan at one point. A lot of people go into comedy and aren't mega fans of comedy. Mm-hmm. I came into it a, a big, big fan of comedy, and Bobby Kelly pointed it out to me about a particular comic, but it, it, it plays across the board. It's uh, you, you get when you can't when you figure out someone's recipe. Yeah, uh-huh. even if you think they're funny, if you know the recipe, you just go. I just kind of know where it's going to go. Like at some point, you lose like uh, like interest in that person mm-hmm. so much. And, that, and 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 he said, which I completely agree with too is you and patrice are both two comics of of many comics out there who have but i i you, if you don't know mm-hmm. someone's recipe it still makes them like intriguing to watch that's a big thing do you watch anybody well, here's my recipe alcoholism with a healthy <laughs> dose of rage yeah <laughs> you no. comedically take off your shirt on and off 15 <laughs> times a day <laughs> that's I'm, all you do um let me ask you. <laughs> Tip your weight, staff. No. Fuck you. No, I won't no, do what no, you tell me. He gets a light. Fuck you. <laughs> I won't do what you tell me. I did find out yesterday, too, that uh, you can turn any song, though, into a, a Rage Against the Machine song. They have such a distinct, like, that bass mm-hmm. and the settings on the guitar are so, like, set to whatever it is they do. At one point, he goes, this is a cover of a great song, uh, The Ghost of Tom Joad, by the only boss you should ever listen to. Bruce Springsteen. Then just goes like, but then it just goes like, boom, and yeah. yeah, you know, you know, you're like, this is just out. a Rage Against the Machine song. They put that out on an album. I didn't know that was yeah, a Bruce, it's great. Bruce Springsteen song until, like, I read it somewhere. It's a good like, tune. Yeah. Ghost of Tom Joad. No, oh, it's a toe tapper. I well, I was just gonna go back to the original of like listening to comedy once mm-hmm. you like become a comic. Like uh, that's what I do miss, which is like listening to a comedy album before it was a com- like with Sam Kennison. Like when I was sure. starting listening to guys like that, how exciting that was, and how much like you know you wanted to get up and like you know yeah. do push ups or something. You know, like you had all that crazy energy. No, like dice there. rules. I used to. There was a double. It was a double cassette. Dice rules, and I used to listen to it. I used to take baths like a little boy and listen to it. To dice rules, yeah, that's great. I used to have uh, a bunch box. of. I used to have a bunch of HBO one night stands. Mm-hmm. It was right when CDs started coming out, and I just drive. I was a pizza delivery driver, and I just drive listening to com- HBO mm-hmm. half hours. And now one night stands. And now you Pat just, and Oswald's like ninety five. And now you just listen to it and just fucking pick it apart. <laughs> like, I'd be like our cops joke. Oh, that's what's the it. dice uh, uh, CD where you know he's he does it at the uh, where's it Dangerfields. Dangerfields. Day the laughter died. My 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 friend and my editor Jeremy. He is like obsessed with that. Like when when he listened to it and I he doesn't mind me outing him on this. It's like he was like it, it was like one of these things where it's like you just found out like one of the secrets of the universe. You know, like we were talking about, it was like, like I couldn't stop listening to it. I didn't yeah. want to, but I had to, and, it, and you know that kind of thing. I do love it, but it is like, uh, it's not like good comedy. Like it's, I mean, it's falling apart. Yeah, it's, right. it's like one of those things, like, um, like a historical reenactment, like the yeah. uh, your Cuban yeah. Missile Crisis. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, the world might end at any, but it's going to take cool heads <laughs> yeah. to get through this. You know. <laughs> but you know what's great is the guy from Dangerfields, Tony, who I, I love, Tony, but he does, uh, you know, he's the owner. He does love talking in hindsight about mm-hmm. everything, uh, you know, because he's like, he's like, oh, the day the laugh died. He goes, isn't that so great? It was such a fun night. It was so. Dice <laughs> came in. He goes, don't announce I'm coming in. I'm coming in on a Tuesday at like 9 p.m. Don't tell anybody I'm coming. I just want to do whatever crowd's there. And it was like 18 people in the room, and that's what that album is. Uh, he tells a story, a long story that mm-hmm. I'll shorten about uh, Andy Kaufman. Mm-hmm. showing up to do like his audition 
and he showed up in the afternoon with an eight, not an eighteen wheeler, but like a U-Haul truck full of drums. <laughs> and he set the drums up all afternoon, all yeah. over the stage, covering the stage, so everybody else had to perform with these drums <laughs> all over the stage. And then when he got on stage, finally for his seven-minute set, it was an audition. He uh, he just introduced the drums. <laughs> That's like right. he just introduced everybody to the drums. Like one of these, like this is a drum kit and the bongos <laughs> and the you know all this stuff. And then, and then and then he just left. That's great. <laughs> and then left. And then came back after everybody had left from the show to deconstruct the drums and take them out. That's a commitment. And he goes, oh, it was so hilarious and great. And I was like, shut up, Tony. You didn't think <laughs> it was great. You didn't think everybody else thought in the room that night. Like, the fuck is this horse shit? Yeah. But with, with, with Dice's uh, album there, it's like everybody everybody like looks at it now, which is like, you know, everybody kind of like does a special or whatever. is trying to do this thing where it's like, I'm going to do it to like, you know, um, <clears throat> my swim coach from high school. Like, he's the only guy in the audience. Isn't that crazy? I mean, who would be weird? But back then, like... To do it, to tape something like that, and then to release it—that's the balls. That's the ultimate sure. balls. Well, like, Bamford did hers in front of just her parents, right? Yeah, she did a special in front of her. But that parents. is a specialty thing because that is really like her like thing. Like that's her universe. I guess other people really is, in their whole like I'm it, not so sure about. It really is burning your hour though yeah. for like a very like you know uh, mm -hmm. for a risky artsy kind just of an artsy idea. Yeah, because the thing is, like, it won't play. Well, forever. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's not one you're gonna go back and uh, listen to. Like you don't. Even oh, know, you're right. You don't listening. You don't even overthink listening to an album and thinking that would happen if there was like no major laughter behind when did, it. When when did he record? So that was a joke we always make about going and doing a comedy album in a studio booth. Like, <laughs> this is the thing goes, all right, you know, let's take that one back from the top again. Uh, yep. You, you now say put that in a tickle here, and then I'll bring it up. <laughs> you say way. that as a joke. Uh, I started in Tucson, and this guy would this open micer would sell his album. And he was just an open micer, and I was like, how'd you do an album? He's like, oh, my friend has a studio. And I was like, <laughs> I will take one of those albums. And I, bought I bought it, and me and my friend Johnny smoked a joint and listened to it, and it was just him in the studio like, ah, women are crazy. <laughs> it's just like open mic comedy. I My CD book like was Like in an open mic room? In no, like, in a, a, like a studio. Like he no did audience. It in his studio. No audience. Oh, he was just talking gross. to his friends like Dirk Diggler in Boogie Nights when he's looking oh, at him. Where great. he was like looking at him like, ah, oh, women are crazy, right? And dude, it was like he was a you know, I think a uh, black half black, half Mexican dude, so he's like, Man, bitches be nuts. And he's had that black comic confidence mm -hmm. with no audience. How much do you wish you still had that tape? More than anything right now. And I he, wanted... didn't, he didn't put in like a like a laugh track or anything? No. Like oh man. So it's cool. just like this awkward, like he's like ah, Man, I be living in the south side of town. You know, the south side of town, crazy. And do we? It was amazing. <laughs> but I was. You hear every like lip smack and teeth. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to tell us he did all crowd work. Uh, what that. do you do? <laughs> the engineer. Uh, I record things. Oh, that's crazy, man. He has to keep cutting in. Um, hey, are you going to keep doing this or? Uh, give me a break, Dave. <laughs> One break. <laughs> Coming up. <laughs> 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 That's like a great studio conversation. I always the uh, only victim there is you who bought it and his mother who lent him money to get the studio. Oh, I think it was probably a cousin. There's a guy. <laughs> there's a guy who still walks around uh, my block now because now he's gone on from believing he works at a comedy club to believing that he's uh, an honorary police officer. Cool. Mm -hmm. He. Um, but he used to be outside the Boston Comedy Club all the time when that was going. And he he believed he worked for the firefighters there or something, but now he thinks he's a cop. Or sometimes got, mental insanity. Or he thinks is good, he has some for the cops. Sometimes mental insanity is like a good gainful employment. Christine, what does he think? He, what does he think he does? What does he think? Uh, what does he think he does for the cops? Crazy Jay on our street. I don't know what he thinks he does. He just says that he works there. Yeah, he just says he works for the cops. He, like, works the police and when they have their events he like dresses up and goes to them like yeah we see him walking in a suit but he's crazy borderline homeless but he, he he's historically always been like a goofy liar and when me and DeRose lived together one time we gave him a ride somewhere and he goes hey I'm gonna give this to you guys right now and he gives us an audio tape that is one thing in my life that I do wish I just did not lose please tell and uh no he goes he goes yeah me and my brother have a band he goes we do a bunch of covers we're really good you should check it out. And you can tell what he hands me is a tape that's definitely just like, you know, you go to like the Boardwalk or Great Adventure and you can mm -hmm. go do karaoke with like the actual track of the music. Yeah. So it's just Van Halen playing Panama. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just him playing Panama, but it's him singing it. Yeah. He's like, I'm the front man. My brother's on guitar. He shreds like Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> wow. And he, and he, 
Danny, and it's just Eddie Van Halen playing. But him singing the words is still so because he really has that voice, kind of like a Rich Voss voice. Yeah. But uh, that part where he goes, he's off time, so he's going. He's like, uh, reach down between the le- actually. Can you bring up bring up Panama, Chris? You know the thing. I show you how off time it is because like with the background. Yeah, that's a hard tune though. Oh, <laughs> sure. Especially anything, with a real band when your brother David Lee Roth. Especially <laughs> when your brother shreds. I believe they time changed three or four times and then go towards like the yeah. Get to the middle of it. But this is it's great. It's just they, this. Go more to the middle of it when he's talking. Keep going. Keep going. What a body he had. That David Lee Roth, yeah. Keep They're going. all so good at moving while yeah, playing the guitar. He starts doing this part. He goes, reach down between my legs and ease the seat back. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> David Lee Roth should be on the list of like the hundred greatest Jews who ever lived. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> oh, you think he's yeah. top heave? I, I, as a member of the tribe, I always look at him like, yeah. See, we're not so top you know, one hundred heaves. We're cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, look at us guys. <laughs> Wait, I just want to say the parks, the, the timing of this because it still had like the background voices playing. Yeah. So it's right here. About this time, right? This so you go here he goes way too early he goes he goes Panama it's like after like they already start saying <laughs> Panama in the background he's just trying to catch up Panama oh, that's pretty great I wonder if they do any of this hijink stuff in their live show now not, not even not. sort of they really I think they, I think they almost have to keep separate from each other mm-hmm. and it is crazy do they lower them in cages he is a. Uh, <laughs> He's got a lot to process on a daily basis, David Lee Roth, I bet, because what a fall from from being like the epitome of so awesome in that exact look. Yeah. Like, even if he had to cut his hair short at that time, he wouldn't have pulled that off. Like, his look was completely being in shape, having that long girl hair, you know, with the poof in the front. Like, mm-hmm. it was perfect for him. He just looked awesome all in that and like... As soon as that was over, it was over. Everybody Which, else just looks kind of like fine. Yeah, but if you look at him compared to like some of the other hair bands of the day, not not so much whorish makeup, you know, just tasteful. Oh yeah, like, you tasteful know, makeup, <laughs> Sunday makeup. Yeah. You know, I, like, think he, I think he didn't know Cinderella makeup. or any of those guys where they really over the top. Yeah, Cinderella's Friday night. Mm. David, David Lee Roth Sunday yeah. morning. David, you take him to meet your mom. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're gonna have some of my mama's brisket, David, because you're a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, I mean, he was just. I bet he so was he, crushing pussy at a, a rate we can never. Well, he. I think comprehend. that like that like crazy fame thing that like completely burnt him out when I worked at K-Rock he took over for Stern mm-hmm. in yeah, New York that was a hard role and they had him he came into the studio and he had him cut out the carpet <laughs> and he's like cut out the carpet I want to tap dance every morning the, en- <laughs> the engineer at K-Rock told me this he goes I want to, he goes, I want to tap dance every morning and, and the uh, engineer goes uh, I'm going to let you know just pure science if I do that you can't touch the mic or you'll get shocked. And he's like, Now, nah, give me the zap. It's going to be great. I'm going to tap dance and everybody's going to love it. I'll touch the mic as much as I want because I'm David Lee Roth. One tap dance could up. And he, they said the first day he did it, he fucking bang. And he was like, and he started getting mad at, he got mad at the engineer. And he's like, Every time I skip the tap and I touch the microphone, it shocks me. Ooh, I got zapped. <laughs> Look, my chest hair is standing on end. <laughs> Uh, yeah, shit. so he's a fucking. That's like that real super high fame, and then you just don't let go, and you no. just stay up there, even though you've fallen. But I, I saw that happening. I saw that happening on a small mm-hmm. scale with a uh, what's this? That guy from Jane's Addiction, oh, Dave Perry, Navarro. Oh, Dave Navarro. Dave Navarro. But oh yeah, but, but he still thinks he can walk into a room though and be like, "You and you and you, let's go have a foursome, and then we'll come back and shoot the scene." You're gonna be just on my left nipple. <laughs> I want you just to tug on my left nipple. But isn't he a judge on one of those shows, The Voice or something? No, like Tattoo Ink or something. Oh, Sorry. what Excuse a me. slide. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, not a mainstay. But uh, David Lee Roth, though, like, look at these videos. They still hold up. I mean, they're sexist. Let's let's just get right to it. They're sexist. <laughs> but it's a simpler time. Like, no one's, you know, talking about the web or anything. No, no, one's <laughs> no global warming. Yeah. Nobody cared. No yeah. one's complaining about these girls being used. <laughs> that girl's like, I if I had a blog, I would <laughs> take you down, David Lee Roth. 
And he seemed to involve a lot of the uh, unemployed uh, L.A. comics. <laughs> <laughs> you can almost smell the, uh, you know, I'm available. <laughs> Skibbity bop, she's a woman and a person too. Skibbity do bop, a zibbly bow. I like nothing more than listening to her opinions about mm. politics. <laughs> one, <laughs> one great conversation coming up. Change. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the music video is just gone by the wayside yeah. anyway. Yeah, no one does music videos anymore, man. Well now, well, now it's all like, it's so like, you know, it's like you on a, like a rusted tractor. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, we should do a great, but, we do a great country music video. video. But they, uh, but you're right though, this, these, they wouldn't actually get away. They would say this is like too sexist. It is. Stuff well, look at it. No, it is. <laughs> I'm saying all that stuff. Crazy. But I mean, like how much like, but again, how advanced... We, uh, I'm trying to think of the right way to put it. Even like we've come so far in like we're desensitized to a lot where people don't seem to get like the people who are on the side of like not getting upset about shit. Yeah, really don't get upset about shit, and yeah. then the people who do go way over the top. And there's so many more forms to kind of like pull it out. I saw when I was that Chicago Rosemont. I think I told you that the album cover for Lenny Bruce, uh, one of his albums. It's him. With a bikini Asian girl and a bikini black girl next to him, and then behind them, it's the Klan, mm -hmm. and they're all black guys. You can see their hands and everything. They're black guys in the Klan suits, and I'm just like, that just today would never. Oh happen. yeah, no. so you wouldn't be, and, and, you, and you think we've come further? If it makes sense, the people who wouldn't get upset by that mm -hmm. would really be like, get the fuck over. Are, they, are you yeah. kidding? It's like satire and it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But, but there's. So it would be it would be shut down because people would buckle much more to, to people going like, well, Walmart. Why do I have to walk exactly. through your store and see this album cover? That's you know, the whole. Like that's that. all. I think it's the the shift in advertising. Like how much more importance is on advertising now? Because you can't. Yeah, that was it right there. You, see you that? saw that in a Walmart? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, wow. No, no, no. no, no. See, I'm, I'm saying you never would. Them. You never would see like that in a Walmart. Like some like long haul trucker. You know what I could go for? <laughs> a little Lenny Bruce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's some good Six, new comedy. Some '60s political <laughs> satire. Yes, a more tall got me here from. A, I drove out of Lexington. I got, but, uh, I got Dick Gregory on the way yeah, to Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to do some Lenny Bruce chopping it up. I need a man slowly falling into an opiate addiction. I got a youngin at home who's got the sniffles. Now, I know it'll pick him right up. That would be a Mort Saul uh, <laughs> compilation. Mort Saul. Uh, <laughs> Christine, look up, if you could, uh, most offensive album covers. Ooh. Oh, that's a good one, Jay. That's a great Google. Jay, but, you know, can I just compliment your Google can I say recommendation? Richard Pryor's album covers? Mm -hmm. You know, not to get into the exact, like, you know, bicentennial... <laughs> uh, and uh, the, uh, um, his stuff out of control. I remember seeing that in Tower Records, and I'm like, "Holy, holy shit! We got a, a, an album!" <laughs> <laughs> but you're, yeah, you're saying nowadays you can't have anything kind of close because the people who will get upset is too large. Dude, how, I mean, well, I look at the names of comedy specials now. Oh shucks and heck! Hey, mine's you called heard not me, heck! Mine's, yeah. called, mine's called not special. Take it back, Dave. <laughs> but it's my next one's gonna be called throat fuck. Time for <laughs> supper. I mean, is that really a Dan Soder live from <laughs> Buffalo throat fucking? Oh yeah, road. I remember that. I remember the yes. big deal about that, and that was great. That was a great cover. Black crows. Black crows America. And they, made him, and they made him get rid of the uh, bush. The lady, because there was pubic hair on it. There were on what? Oh yeah. Who's blind that? faith? Uh, I yeah, but. Yeah, look at that. So Blind Faith's got a... What is, what is we'll post child? all these, like again, a child. we'll post all these at the Bonfire SXM on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. And uh, David Tell is going to be at Helium in Philadelphia this weekend, Friday, September 2nd, through Sunday, September 4th. For tickets and all other tour dates, go to davidtell.com. And Big J going to be performing on the Oddball Comedy Festival this year. You can catch him in Chicago, Detroit, and Toronto. No, uh, I don't think Toronto. Chicago and Detroit. <laughs> Uh, Friday, September 2nd, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, Saturday, September 3rd. Go to uh, oddballfest.com for tickets. And then uh, and I that special And that special, aptly titled Not Special. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, that is a good name. Dan uh, Soder's special available on iTunes as well as several other formats. And Make get, sure you get that. Big J Special, live at Webster Hall. 
on the same formats and check out Dave Attell's Road Work on Netflix. And sorry to say if uh, I will, I'm not going to be a bumber shoot. I know we plugged it, but I had to cancel. Why? Yeah, long story, but I uh, I had to cancel. So Does Death Cab for Cuties specifically <laughs> request you not to be there? Uh, we got into some beef. Did you get into some beef with? Uh, I have a strict thing in my writer where I will not perform on the same <laughs> festival as Death Cab for Cutie. So. <laughs> The music uh, there wasn't going to be that fun anyway, was it? There was a couple people I really wanted to see. Logic, like a couple other people, but yeah. Queen Psych. He's a, what's that? I'm sorry. Queensryche? I would love <laughs> to see <laughs> Queensryche. I've seen Queensryche so many times. I want to see them at a carnival. I, in fact... In <laughs> Leather fact, pants with daughter. a Ferris wheel behind it. What did you pick? I don't know. It's just pure white. I guess it's wisdom. <laughs> oh, you mean... Oh, you got the Aryan side? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I got the... Uh, <laughs> who were those two girls? The, uh, you know, you remember they were like the... Uh, <laughs> Jan Hooks and uh, no no no, oh. no the um, the uh, they're not racist anymore but they were the Aryan um, z- something blue you remember the Judds the- no, no, no. <laughs> it's the two girls they were raised in this like Aryan world and like they do these like, they were like the they were like the um, who are they I they were like know. acoustic oh, like wanted, uh, so haters were, oh really? but no they grew up they they said that by smoking pot it took like they realized that the uh, the Indigo Girls no no these <laughs> they were like chicks. big in like the Zyklon B world you know like the I'm talking about Aryan Spring kind of like how do you know about Aryan folk rock. Hey, when you're, <laughs> you always got to keep an eye on the enemy. Am I right? <laughs> oh, we looked, we had an episode here. We looked up a bunch of that. Like hate, right? It really it's, it's oh, hate rock. Them? Those girls, yeah. Now they're growing up. They're not like that anymore. Prussian blue, twins. Prussian blue, yeah. Prussian blue twins. And they used to play two Avas. <laughs> That's really. <laughs> I wonder if they had to shit on glass too. <laughs> oh, you know what's funny, man? I really am so. I thought you guys would be all over this. That is a though. great shirt. Can yeah. you look them up? What are they called? The smiley Hitler face? They're they're no longer doing it. Prussian, uh, <laughs> yeah. Prussian blue? Yeah. yeah. But I've heard rumblings of a reunion tour. That would be cool. <laughs> blazing, blazing. They're little, they're One really night only. Yeah. In a field that only, you know. In Eastern Oregon. Yeah. In a the clan presents. Here we go. Oh, they did a video? Good for them. It's called Keep That Black Snake Away From Me. See, look at them dressed up in their little... Uh, oh... I think it's so sweet. Look at them. They're dressed like they're going to a renaissance they fair. Just, they just grew up and got plowed out by dudes wearing combat boots when they fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Marcus just blowing them out. Oh, oh that was quick. That's got real. <laughs> that's real. I, I fuck my dad. Look. I wonder what that baby's name is. Adolf? Oh, no. <laughs> what are they singing? Well, they keep cutting away from the trailer that they live in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show their trailer. Yeah, just thin out that shot. <laughs> I would just say it's like Irish oh, folk music. I just, I just, but I just a guy with a swastika on his heart crying. <laughs> yeah. You know, I listen Tell to it, this. Tell it, girl. Tell uh, it. You ever catch this song at a sunset? Here. Play this song. Play this song. This sounds better. Skinhead boy? This sounds more like I want boy. a skinhead boy. He's Isn't got, it sad that like... They're the they Avril Lavigne's of the... <laughs> yeah, that's right. If he, they weren't so attractive, was, would you give them a chance? Probably not. I'm so shallow. A, he was a skinhead boy. Oh, the path we choose. That's ominous. Omnimous. Omnimous. Oh, look at Prussian blue. Mm. The Iron Crosses. You're a skinhead. High five. I want to be your girlfriend. Their mother was their manager, and then when they grow up, they got older, and I guess they started smoking pot and hanging out with, uh, you know, black guys. Yeah. They realized it was all wrong. It's like, baby, you, they, <laughs> you need the soul in you. And, and they left their mother, who was their manager also, so yeah. it was kind of sad for them. And all that skin fell apart. Yeah. The How mo- long ago was this? Were they little girls? Mm. It's got to be like 10 years old now. Can they, you look up probably, Russian Blue now? I'll tell you this, too Like long. the Olsen Twins of Hate. Too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> They played one. Uh, they played one racist girl in a movie. Yeah, they're the Michelle Tanners of Aryan Pride. Uh, I, wouldn't that be great if they went the whole other way? It's like, well, um, you know, my husband Ira, you know, like they married a Jewish guy. Like, oh, we can't go out at Yom Kippur. And, he goes, well, well, yeah. and my, yeah, yeah. can you call me tomorrow? I can't. It's the, it's the, it's the Shabbos. I moved to a tenement in Williamsburg. <laughs> this does make me miss Boise, Idaho. You know that northern part that I, no one ever wants to talk about. <laughs> Well, old Wellwater County. I get it. <laughs> I want to see what it's like now. Track them down, Christine. 
Skin See, they boy. look pretty good. Skin they held up, boys. Skin. Now they're <laughs> now all their songs are about how much they love fucking black dudes. <laughs> oh, look, they look great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Split me in half, <laughs> you chocolate motherfucker, <laughs> cocoa butter lover. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking me so hard, and my mother can hear us. Just when you think there's <laughs> enough lube, that's when you start putting in more lube. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to be here at five. You show up at six thirty. <laughs> but I'm okay Cause you dick me down Why can't you understand I love you But you can't come to my house for Thanksgiving Please honk at the end of the street <laughs> Honk at the end of the street And turn your bass down uh-huh. uh, We should probably take a break We'll be right All back right. It's the bonfire with David Tell The whole episode Yee! Don't make it sound like a question It's not a question It's a statement Dave <laughs> And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, yeah! Isabella, my daughter's here in the studio. We're letting her pick the music today. This is Kanye West famous. All the wax nudity in the video. Is he wax the new Hamilton or no? Did they pick that guy yet? <laughs> is it what? He's the new Hamilton. <laughs> oh, it's the bonfire. Comedy Central Radio Series XM95. Big J Okerson, Dan Soder, David Tell joining us in studio. We are new, not live. Who's that? Bill Cosby? <laughs> That's hilarious. A naked Bill Cosby. Is this a new figure? video for him? Yeah. It's, it's the music video where he has all the wax figures. He has wax figures from um, of all these famous people all laying in bed banging. George W. Bush, Bill Cosby, Amber Rose, Kim Kardashian, Kanye West, Taylor Swift. Is he up for a music award? Uh, <laughs> probably. Kanye? No, it, probably. Is he's up video, for video of the year? Video, yeah, the, for this it, video. This is the stuff Isabella knows better than Oh, me. Caitlyn Jenner is in it. Is that who that's supposed to be? Amber Rose. Amber Rose. Her? Let's ask Isabella. Do you? Uh, who else do you like besides Kanye? Who do you like? Um, oh, you're about to get a track list, buddy. Okay. This is going to be like a focus group. So I like mostly rap. So you do. I like Kanye, yeah. Oh. Drake. I did not do my job. Wow. <laughs> Logic, G Easy. Whoa. G Easy sounds like a made up one. Like that's your friend at school, and he's like, "Yo, from now on, though, I want you to call me G Easy." When me and her mom split, it was a big part of the decision I had to make in my head. I go. I am sacrificing the fact that my daughter's going to like straight garbage music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what you lost. That's what you lost in the divorce. I was like, there's not going to be any chance she's going to get into any <laughs> decent Donald rock music Trump. or have any history of classic rock. It's over. Yeah. I'm taking her to see... Isabella, do you like any... See, I'm taking her to see Corn on like, uh, Tuesday. I mean, you're still... Well, pre- prepare for the eye rolls on the ride home. Yeah. Oh, hey, <laughs> What Dad. was that, Dad? Why was everyone slamming their head back and forth and making their hair move? Why do white guys have dreadlocks? <laughs> yeah. Does it stink? <laughs> Isabella, do you like any rock at all? No. No. 21 Pilots. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which is rock-ish. Um, yeah. Like Green Day, does that count? Yeah. Green okay. Day. All like right. Now we're Mashbox cooking with gas. Yeah. Wow. Now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> like, what else you got? What about <laughs> those Stone Temple Pilots, huh? Okay. No, no Soundgarden. Yeah, but those okay. are all the songs you hear. Yeah. 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 What like about the doubt. You? The, no doubt? Gwen Stefani. I went to her concert. Oh, I love it. No way. See? That's cool. We're safe. You're coming around. Yeah, you're a good dad. You're a great dad. Jay. <laughs> you didn't take me to Gwen Stefani. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you can. Sometimes you can hold back sentences. You can sometimes. <laughs> You can say more by not saying anything at all. No, no, I, I'll i cover it financially. I'm not going to sit through a Gwen Stefani concert. Wow. He went, though. Oh. He went, and he didn't even go. Hashtag yes, all the, Gwens. Uh, how about the Taylors? <laughs> Did you like Taylor Swift? or? Oh, yeah. you were into a Taylor Swift one? She looks like the uh, the wife of a billionaire that likes firing people. <laughs> yeah. That's what she looks like. I, she has I great, like she has her. I would, if I had a daughter, I would take her there like three or four times a year. If you had what? <laughs> I think she's hot. I like that Taylor. But if you, had, if you had what? You if I had a daughter, I'd have a reason so I could take yeah. her like, let's go see her again. She's like, Dad, uh, Dad I don't like Taylor <laughs> Swift. Like, well, I do. <laughs> Nate Bargatze, who you're going to go see. Love uh, to, in uh, Carly Rae Jepsen. Who's in town. Loves... Taylor Swift, and he says he he doesn't like music. That's a real sentence came out of Nate Bargatze's mouth. <laughs> doesn't he love Carly Rae Jepsen too? He loves. He likes Carly Rae Jepsen. I've said Jepsen. this. Bef- yeah. I've said this before about Nate, and I'll say it again. His musical tastes can be classified as neon bowling night at the yeah. bowling alley. Oh yeah, galaxy bowling. Galaxy he, uh, bowling night. He what you call when he got hammered? That's a great story he has. When he got hammered at the, <laughs> the, at the roast, Bieber roast, at nose? the Bieber roast, and went up to Carly mm-hmm. Rae Jepsen and and just like he got kicked out because he was being weird to her. We kept going up to her and kept going. He's I, like, I get it. 
<laughs> I yeah. get it. I, mean, I know he goes, he goes, he goes, it sounds weird. I know. But I'm really a big fan. I love it. He, he apologizing yeah. to her for being a fan of hers, which does not probably read well. I get it. <laughs> uh, I know. I know. I went to the country. I, uh, Nate and I were in Nashville doing a gig, and we went to the um, Country Music Hall of Fame, and there was a whole Why? Tyler. I don't know. Cause it was actually kind of cool. I had a good time there. You could see Elvis's weird Cadillac. What made you think to go there? It was during the day. We had nothing to do. So you want to go see the history of the Rascal Flats? Yeah, I, I like. I think it was it was kind of a cool thing to you go. Want to go touch the Rascal Flats first stage garb? <laughs> I want Clint Black's hat. I want to see if it feels like I think it feels like. But we went and there was a whole Taylor Swift exhibit, and Nate was like, he lit up. He was like, oh, I was like, oh shit, we got to like go. This one when he got to Wally World. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Are you, are you all fucked in the head? We're gonna go see Taylor Swift. Oh yeah, look at these. Oh, these are back to the offensive album titles. But the stuff we get rid of in this country, the offensive album covers, but all that stuff I watched recently Cannibal Holocaust because I remember that one being changed. The the Appetite for Destruction? Yeah, the rape by the sword monster. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that was a pretty that's pretty racy. <laughs> I get that being a thing. Now it's just like Pictures from history, I guess. It's, uh, it's all all Ansel bangers. Adams pictures. <laughs> Another nice scenic landscape. Jimmy the, Hendrix. Uh, oh wait, Christine. Yeah, oh, we just, were just talking. John Lennon. We were just talking about uh, before off the air when you were not here, and they said to save it. But uh, white supremacist. I said you hooked up with a white supremacist, not like the full shebang. You had a skinhead boy. You had a skinhead boy. Can you play skinhead boy again for us? <laughs> skinhead boy. Oh, I, I forgot how it went. Skinhead boy. Prussian blue. No, you learn your Prussian blue, Jay. She may have beat him, though. I think she beat him. So, they have one called Stop Immigration? Mm -hmm. No, it's just a picture <laughs> of them. Ballad boy, you're a skinhead boy. Go ahead. Like Dave, Bob, uh, um, Christine. It's a catchy tune. The Not scene bad. is set. You and your friends are hanging out. There's a skinhead there. We we had some friends that just hung out. Like my friend, my friend was dating a guy named Lauren that was like they were the skinhead guys in school. He's my skinhead boy. I love and they my were skin. awful. They were awful, and they really were just the worst people. But I was like fifteen and fat, and had just lost my virginity, and the guy broke up with me, and this guy was just kind. Of, I didn't even fully like realize what was going on, but we, you, we hooked up. It didn't really you, go beyond until that. Until you was in the skater park? Was it a ramp it tramp? Well yeah, it, was in the shadow of a, it was in the shadow of a half pipe. There was the a dark side of the skater right community. He was a ramp tramp. <laughs> Were you hanging out? Hey, dude, I loved your uh, three, I don't know any of the skater terms. D Dan, do you know any of those? Hey, did you just kick flip off the yeah, curb that was and finger kick blast? Dude, you know, my dad has a pool. We can drain the drain the water and I can watch you do your shit. Hey, sweet rail grind. And you can you finger to... blast me on the diving board. <laughs> yeah. Sweet rail grind. You want, you want me to bead you off? And <laughs> I'm throwing I'm throwing handies to anyone that can land a 1080. He was, he was like making jokes that his name was Adolf. Like it was really ridiculous. Oh, wow. They were really scummy people. Why would you put your mouth on him? I don't know. Did you not know until your nails were digging into his iron cross? It didn't tattoo? really like the hookup was not a good one. <laughs> he, he, his semen tasted like Jew blood. <laughs> didn't even get there. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. I wonder what storage unit he manages somewhere now. You know, <laughs> it's like one of those jobs. I need, you know, I can't really deal with people. So, I, you know, I heard I, a, like authority. I know. heard a woman on the radio of a car driving by. It sounded like Christine. <laughs> did you see that? Uh, did you see that documentary uh, on Netflix, the Welcome to Leaf? That weird little town in. I want to say, no, no, it's South it's, Dakota. Maybe it's West Virginia. Is that where the white supremacist tried to take over the town? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I definitely he just saw that. Went, He just went into himself and was like, he's like, I like this place. And he just called all of his white supremacist buddies. I love that. And yes, these, I, I love it. Yeah, these guys, he goes, he goes, come here, man. There's so much land. He goes, he goes you could just build a house in a day if you want and the, just, like, take over the town. And they just did. North, North and Dakota, the good people, North. the good people, because it was all about becoming mayor and, like, running the town. Like, like if Joker took over Gotham. That was yeah. the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, of like, yeah. I'm going to call in all the evil from around the world. It's and, Leaf, no, North Dakota. Yeah, and he has never, he has not backed. He never backed off for a second. But they kicked him out. The good people rose up eventually. Well, they got him. well he went to jail. Yeah, he went to jail. But I mean, they would just like patrol around. It is, it's a real. Yeah, you should it's a good quote. A oh, real horror story. It's terrible. Like what these guys, they just come in and they're, they're so. You know what it is too? What there's what, the the one brilliant thing about like these like 
the the provocative like hate speech people. Mm-hmm. One thing they know how to do, they know how to say what they want to say, get people angry, and then laugh at who's angry. Oh, why are you angry, man? Do you, do you know what I'm saying? It's like that kind of thing. So it's kind of like, why don't you get out of here, you piece of shit? Nobody wants you here because you're you're you know you're insulting my friends and you're trying to fuck up my community. And they always walk around like, hey man, don't blame me, blame the Fifth Amendment. You know all yeah, that kind yeah, of shit. Yeah. Like yeah. It's like blame the uh, you know, First Amendment. What are you gonna do, is man? This, and this is I have every, and they just giggle like I have every right to live here. And you just know it's like this one guy's like in his house with his kids, like loading a gun. And everything. Mm-hmm. He's like, I am afraid because like these guys are crazy. And this is on Netflix. Yeah, it's great. I saw it on uh, Channel Thirteen. It's really good. I'm gonna watch tonight. It's really good. And I'm gonna listen. And I'm gonna listen to Skinhead Boy. Yeah. <laughs> Skinhead Boy. Skinhead Boy. And yeah. with that perfect storm, maybe you can come. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, it just dribbled out a little. Mike, come in here. Mike. I'm going for a handless. Mike. I'm going for a handless jack. Look, it's happening. But, uh, by the way, Vecchio's car got stolen. No way. No. I didn't tell you that. I did not know that at all. Yeah. You think he would tell me that? Where's a cell phone in the car? Well, guess what? <laughs> now there's street justice to be had. Well, I was wondering Mike's if Mike's haircut finally pays off. I was wondering if he stole the car and, and also did his gig at the uh, Bugatti <laughs> in Atlantic City. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sucks. Yeah, I didn't know we that. Talked he stole about his car and <laughs> then delivered well-crafted jokes <laughs> at the Borgata. Yeah. Wait a second. So if this is Mike on the phone, that must be the Mike on stage is... Uh, <laughs> go, 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 when did this go, happen? Ghost. I didn't know that. Yesterday. I just thought him. Yeah, yesterday. Wow. Yesterday? Yeah, I just got home. I just landed. His Acura. The, I landed from the airport. He must be home. PO'd. Yeah. Although you don't he doesn't get him mad. Although he doesn't yeah. have to park. He doesn't have to park now. For, mm. it? That's what no, I told him. No alternate side of the street parking I've been trying for a to, week. I've been, I was trying to. Right side it. I was home for 15 minutes and I go, hey, you don't got to move it. Funny how it happens while you're out of town. Mm, interesting. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Are you saying it's a conspiracy to tell? You know, it's funny. He's such a guy, though, too. You know, it's like when he comes back from finding out it's stolen and comes back into the house. That is, it's like there's no. Uh, he he wouldn't even giggle about a funny thing you'd say for oh. hours and hours and you know what I mean like oh no I've officially dubbed it nostril breathing Sunday. <laughs> it's uh, all yeah. it's all heavy nostril breathing. You bad huh? Uh, yeah, uh, no 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 he wasn't he's by the way he's taking this like a champ. He's yeah like, he like called the police he like filed the report he like went and waited it's like been a whole ordeal. Yeah, it's a long yeah it's a long and deal. he's actually been fucking great about it. I mean I only saw him for twenty minutes but. Well, he'll get no insurance money until they find it, or it's like a certain amount of months. I don't know, man, but it, it No, sucks. I had a car stolen years ago. Yeah. And it was an old, talk about like the worst road car. It was like a road, like a horrible road car, and they stole it, they hot-wired it. And then, um, you know, like part of me was like glad, like, whoa, I got yeah. rid of that junker. Then the other part of me was like, oh, how am I going to get around that? But then they finally, the cops called me one time. They go, we found your car. Um, it's hot wired, so it can't be turned off. It's in the middle of like, you know, 8th Avenue. If you don't show up within an hour, we're going to tow it, and you're going to have to pay like $9,000 or something like yes. that. I was like, huh? What's yeah. So, but that was like, uh, you know, welcome we, to New York. Yeah, I was we like found... living in New York in the <laughs> bad times. Now I didn't know it still happened. Like, I got it. We found your car on the 16th floor of the Chrysler <laughs> building. You got a 13 minutes to get here, or else we're going to blow it up. I remember <laughs> years ago when we were doing open mic at the Laugh House in Philly, uh, me and Kurt first started. Uh, I had to run in. Yeah. I had to go in or something. Maybe I was like featuring for the, or, or hosting or something. Either way, I had to run in, and I said to Kurt, I go, Kirk, you park the car for me, please? He's like, yeah, no problem. So we do the show or whatever it is, two shows. We come out afterwards and we're walking to the car. And he goes, oh, man, this is weird. He goes, the car was supposed to be right here. Supposed to be right. And I look up and I'm like, there's signs everywhere that's like this particular area is like a towaway zone. Yeah. And I'm like, God damn it. So then we got to call all the police to find out where it got towed to. Then it turns out didn't get towed. He parked in the towaway spot, but somebody just stole it anyway. <laughs> then when they found it, uh, like a month or so later in Camden, New Jersey, and you forget the things that are in there, like my joke notebooks yeah. were in there, mm-hmm. and my first ever headshots, and they say when they found the car, uh, my headshot was on the dashboard, like with a knife into the <laughs> into the dashboard. I was like, that's holy terrifying. That's terrifying. shit, but that's just scary, You're like, wow, uh, yeah. what? That's odd, there, uh, we found your car, and in the back we found a bunch of headshots, and then also a voodoo <laughs> curse book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, was, so uh, Apparently there was a bloodletting in the hatch. <laughs> yeah, there was, in the hatch. There was a hatchback. Oh, the, it was it the Honda Accord? Honda Accord hatchback. Yes. Kirk got it stolen for me. Son of a so bitch. So do you think Kirk put the me. headshot like that with the knife, and then like he had it stolen? <laughs> 
yeah. 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 He was so angry. Was, why is he hosting this? Oh, I don't like it. Why is he hosting for Willie Robocop? <laughs> the Washington, D.C.'s finest. <laughs> I was in School uh, humping headliner. In St. Louis, and the manager, like, we went, you know, I was snowed in, so we went to the strip club in St. Louis, which is, you know, a skeevy town to begin with. Sure. And uh, his car got jacked, like, right there. But we saw the guy stealing it. As, like, <laughs> we were, he was walking me, like, he was, he was like, I just got to get my bag out of your car, and then I'm going to go home. You can hang, and, you know, and, like, he, it was like, he's the whitest guy, and it's very, like, it is super hardcore urban there. Sure. So, like... <laughs> He's trying to do the like you've seen it in every movie, you know, like stop, that's my car, <laughs> you know, <laughs> stop, get yeah. out of there, <laughs> down. Yeah, yeah. Down. Funny, I wonder how scary the situation has to be when before you like don't really intervene. You have to watch it like when there's like a raccoon going through your garden. There's oh, like nothing you can do. Yeah. Like you just like, see a person going through your car and you're like. Well, I'm not going to say anything. That guy looks terrifying. When I got when I got robbed in Tucson, and that guy had me fucking hog tied and pistol whipped. There's not really anything you can do. He was just taking my car. I was like, "Yeah, it's your car now. I hope you enjoy it." Uh Can you not pistol whip me anymore? Yeah, it hurts. He actually did pistol whip you. Yeah, clocked you with the gun. But it was here's the the head gun was it? Here was the best thing. It was my roommate's gun. He had saved money and bought a cheap gun. No. So the fuck the streets uh, at a gun show in Arizona. Oh, he legally bought it. Yeah, he was walking by, like, and he walked in, but he wanted to save money, so it was part. It was like half plastic. Oh. <laughs> so when it? he hit me, I was like, "Ow!" Like, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. gonna be like, "No, man, that didn't hurt at all." You should have just like then you like, 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 over scream, then just pass like. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I, I took a res- <laughs> I took a wrestling bump. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And instead, or I could have done the Start other looking way. Looking at blood that's not there on your yeah. hands, like oh, oh, God. oh that's, that's brain fluid. Is that oh. brain fluid? Or I could have done the opposite way, where I just act like I just stand back up. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> the Terminator music. Dun, 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 dun. Your pistol whips don't uh, don't get get out of my house. <laughs> but he took my car, and I was like, "Fuck that shit! You can go ahead and take it." I got towed once. In Tucson, and that was more frustrating than anything because they wouldn't let me back to my car without the registration. And I'm like, the registration's in the car. And it was just this fat woman wrangled up into a mm-hmm. sports bra, mm-hmm. glitter on her tits. Yeah. And she had a, <laughs> she had a necklace that said Angel on it. Aww. And she was like, I'm not letting you back there. You need your registration. I was like, my registration's in the car. And she's like, oh, that's pretty convenient now, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Piece of trash. I've been told that, that, that that's the biggest racket here in New York, man. Is those fucking marshals, garbage people, just towing everybody. Terrible, terrible people. They go around and they try to find a car that has like tickets, unpaid tickets on it. They swipe it, and it's a third party thing. Yeah. Mm. So wait. Oh, so you well, have to pay the, the third thing. party? No, it's a third party thing. So as always, you have to pay extra. You have to pay your shit back to the state. Yeah. For the tickets, but then you have to go pay the marshal. Yeah, and you have to pay the fucking like the tow fees and all that. It's crazy. Let, uh, would you like let, being towed is the worst? But mm-hmm. would you like let's say you're illegally parked and you the cop is writing the ticket? Mm-hmm. Would you make a choice like you earlier said? Like would you say like, listen, we're either going to give you this ticket and tow your car, or mm-hmm. else well, I'll get to pistol whip you with a subpar <laughs> yeah. for a I couple think, yeah. like three swipes here's how you can go this can go one of two ways I'm either going to cost you $500 or you got to take a lump on the noggin from this fucking shit because it would probably help them out too they get a little yeah. anger and then they go he took the, they always take the pistol <laughs> that's like that's like the training for the police yeah, officer yeah, yeah. No one ever takes the toe. It's funny. What a day I had, honey. <laughs> I got a What's whip? that lump on one side of your head? <laughs> well, don't be a hero. <laughs> but the Taurus is in the driveway. <laughs> That's all that matters. Do you like the, the heroic stories? There was a comic. Uh, I don't even know if he's around anymore. He was a great dude. Uh, Mike DiNicola. Remember Mike DiNicola? Yes. Um, I would. I did a couple road gigs with him, like colleges or something, and he was great because he was like a, he's another guy that has like that college, high school wrestler yeah. like mm-hmm. attitude. So like a got, one Vecchio, like yeah, Vecchio. but Vecchio doesn't have this so much. He doesn't have too many like uh, like hero stories. But I remember Mike DiNicola, the whole ride. It was every story had a part of it where he informs the guy who's the you know the protagonist of the situation or the antagonist of the situation. Yeah, the bad guy. Yeah, the bad guy. Always at a point where he gives him the opportunity. He goes, he goes, how do you want, away. He, he, goes, he goes, how do you want your night to go, man? You want to go home? You want to go home just normal and safe? Huh? Go you, to go, you want to go to the hospital? Yeah, he said every, <laughs> he had every story. Somebody goes, so you know, of course, this is the point of the situation where I got to step yeah. in and say, hey, hey, buddy, how do you want your night to go? You know, every time. Yeah, if you had a Cockney accent, you've got one of two choices. 
can, <laughs> you can either keep your bones, or I can break them. I can, <laughs> I can pulverize them till you shit out your bones. This guy just tells you stories that are Jason Statham movies. Um. So I'm a transporter, uh, <laughs> and I've got to get things across the country. A man gave me a pill that if I, um, if my heart slows down, <laughs> all of this guy's stories in a Jason Statham. I will die. <laughs> Does he ever have like a transport that like just like smooth? Yeah, you know, like a drop. Woo, a, a I'm drop. here early. Yeah, I, I guess I'll just hang out. <laughs> Actually, I, I had a nice sandwich. I dropped it off. I did a little walking around. I found a nice cottage. I think I'm going to take my girlfriend there next week. Have brought some brunch. I found a coffee spot to die for. Oh, they've got an eggs benedict. I don't know what they use, but I love it. It was holidays, but something was in it. Transporter 4. The smooth transition. I picked it up early. They happened just to be there. That worked out nice. I picked it up, took it there. Everything worked out great. Fifteen minute movie. Yeah. Thousand dollar tip. Good day. I mean, no, I'm not gonna lie. Also, guess what? Didn't get a parking ticket, and I was inside for fifteen minutes. <laughs> I mean, they could have got me. They could have even booted the car, but they didn't. The sun shines on a dog's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Those movies are so important because that accent for a while I thought was like we're never gonna have to hear that accent again. Yeah. And they came back and I was like, oh good. Oh, here they prepared it is. us for Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, that, it was the buffer. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was the, I can't. That was the blowjob for Game of Thrones. <laughs> I know we've talked about this in the show before, but it really is. I can't get pay, like a like a British show or a British movie. I Jay just is check a xenophobe. Out. It's hard. <laughs> Let's ask your daughter. Do you watch uh, Game of Thrones or does your dad let you? Uh, you can watch Game of Thrones. Yeah, you're doing all right. You have cable, right? Dragons and tits. <laughs> oh, dude, this is so funny. Isabel, it's like you're at a uh, custody hearing right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you want to live with dad or mom? She's like, ah, uh, dad. Because that show is probably like, for kids to, like, you know, a lot of sad old people. So, yeah, to learn. Game of Thrones. Oh, Game of Thrones is, yeah, history for children. They ask, they ask <laughs> and childhood for old people. Are you afraid of your father? I'm like, Isabella, you better not tell him you're afraid of me. Or I'm going to the shit out of you. <laughs> well, the Harry Potter thing, Jay, did you have to go see all those movies with her? The Harry um, Potter movies? Harry Potter. We saw a couple. I saw a couple with her for sure. She never really was too into Harry Potter, though. Were you, Isabella? You never really cared about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, she watched I, 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 I did get her watching pretty adult movies pretty young. Not adult films. Isabella, what was your favorite movie as a child? Oh, it was probably some kid movie. She did watch oh. the kid movies. But with me, like I, we watched like Child's Play pretty oh. young for... Oh. Her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like horror movies, I would take her to see pretty young. And she's pretty desensitized to it, I gotta say. Like, still, I still don't sleep with the lights off in a hotel room. Like, I don't. Like, all night? All night. I had a crazy one. I was just. I don't, and, and, and she sleeps. She's, she's not afraid of the dark or being in a room by herself, the door closed. No, no. Wait, you're. Because just... you're in a hotel because you don't know where things are or because of. Uh... Because of the spirits. Really? Yeah. Yeah, really, just because of the evil that's under the couch? <laughs> no, but I'm going to say one thing. Since you're a smoker, like, we both have to get up at, like, four in the morning. Uh, like, I'm sure. out pretty much in front of the... I'm actually protecting the hotel. I all <laughs> yeah. long. I'm like, they're like... You really should get on the clock. <laughs> <block. laughs> like, you do. And I love your hat. It is almost like head security. Yeah, yeah I, I come out... And I always come in out of the shadows. Like, the kids are like, you know, they come home with, the like, the pizza from the club. It's like, woo, the party's just getting started. And then you see this sad relic coming out. And they're like, uh, uh, okay, just let's go up and read the Bible, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but Jay, it, it is so true. Cause I, I, when I go on the road with you all the time, like, I, that was the best I knew. If it was like four in the morning, I'm like, damn it, I can't sleep. I'm going to go outside and smoke a cigarette. I'm sure Dave's out there. He is. I'm like, did you ever eat that food we got? He was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I like when you come out so many times, like for some reason you just keep smoking and you go back up and then you come back out, that you've run out of like fake things to tell the, the, the night <laughs> desk person. Like, yeah, well, you know, tomorrow it's supposed to be rainy and it's like at that point none of you are like care. Like you're like, we both made horrible you choices. Guys are doing, yeah. You guys are doing this thing where you hold up, you gotta go, Got to knock these things off soon, huh? <laughs> Sooner or later, I'm going to stop these things. By the fifth one, he just doesn't even look up. He's just like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just still typing. You're going to give something to do. You got to go over to that little marketplace and be like, can you put these cheeses that's on my room? Uh, yeah, the Twix and the Aquafina. 316. Through, yeah, 1008. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. I was, you know, I, uh, dude, that reminded me, though. You said you sleep with the lights on. Oh, I, uh, in Fort Worth, was staying at the Hyatt. I was working the hyenas, and um, at the Hyatt... About 3.45 in the morning, all of a sudden my phone on the other side of my bed is on the speakerphone. Oh, no. And I woke up and it was just like, meh, 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 and it was like the speakerphone, and I, wa I couldn't sleep. I was just freaked the fuck out for the rest of the night. Last last night, I had a... I went you were in my room? 
room? <laughs> I was in your room on speakerphone. <laughs> yeah. No, last night, Christine fell asleep on the couch. And I was like, ooh, I'll take this great opportunity to go and bed myself and really stretch out. <laughs> you bring the couch out into the street? She was sleeping fine. <laughs> so I go in the bed and I watch. And I've been I've been starting this horror movie, Apartment 143, for... I, I, this is, this, tomorrow, last night, I should say, it would have been about the 15th time I've turned this thing on. And I'm into it, but I just keep falling asleep on it. It's always like the last thing I put on, I just nod off. So yeah. I'm like 15 minutes in, then 20 minutes in, then I always go back... So last night I start falling asleep, um, but I'm like in and out with like 15 minutes left of the movie, and then I guess I just went like completely asleep. Yeah. But all I sort of remember is closing my eyes, and then like, but then you start to get that half awake feeling again, where you're like, you're like, oh, am I doing it again? I open my eyes, and it was just, it, the movie was over, and it was like, what was going to come up next? It was the movie Dead Silence. Yeah. But this big TV I have in my room, it was just, the whole thing was like a face of like a puppet. Dead sounds about a puppet. And it's just smiling, like in a tuxedo, like a puppet. Uh, and I woke up and I really did that one. I was like, oh, I should finish. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then like, I actually, I'm telling you, this is still, as a, as a 38-year-old man, I have, I'm shuffling and fumbling with the remote. Yeah, you don't want to see it in I your want, head. I want to get... I'm just rushing. I'm rushing to hit back to go because right away on Netflix I always have American Dads just yeah. kind of ready to go. Yeah, you want the you want I, the fun stuff. I just, to click, stop I just click on American Dad, and as soon as I just hear the voice of American Dad, I can just flip back over. But I mean, I was rattled so this by that face. I still I get scared. We it's the most it, bizarre. I run upstairs at night. The most. Oh yeah, yeah but I'm in upstairs. hotels. What I was going to say earlier is that in hotels late at night, mm -hmm. like when you're the only guy like walking around, like that mm -hmm. shining hallway shot where you're like yeah. you're just like walking, <laughs> and it's like you're like any minute something's going to come out. Yeah. Yeah. But then there's also the sounds of the hotel I'm not talking like people you know SEXing <laughs> in their room Ooh, there's like, it's just weird like groans and like weird sounds in mm -hmm. hotels and you're like is this haunted like am yeah. I in the haunted room because they always give the comic the worst room in the hotel like always. right by the elevator <laughs> yeah. where oh, I'm sorry the air conditioning sprays it's, it's great just, you're going to see like a shoot of spray come out at you. this was built in 1910 and that was the burning <laughs> little boys room yeah exactly so you sleep in the burning well the most afraid I've ever been in a hotel was uh, working helium in Philadelphia, where David Tell will be this weekend, <laughs> Friday through Sunday, Friday, mm -hmm. September 2nd through Sunday, September 4th. Go to davidtell.com for tickets. Uh, but I was in the hotel working helium in Philly, and I fell asleep watching TV, and I turned off, I woke up, turned off the TV, put it down, and then I rolled over on the remote. The tur TV turned back on, and I was still asleep, and then my, my elbow started jamming into the remote, and it started changing channels. Oh, mm -hmm. So that, Changed channels, but then what it changed to was the Real Housewives of Miami, <laughs> and, and it was a fight. Oh, and it scared the shit out of me. I woke up like, yeah, yeah and they're like, fuck you, Denise, you don't know me, and they're like throwing bottles, and I'm like, what's happening? It was the most afraid of. Like, I turned off the TV, and I was still smoking at the time, and I had to like go outside and be like, <sighs> it's okay. I've made the decision almost to not smoke sometimes because if I got like San Fran, that punchline. We'll put you up at the club, club quarters. quarters. Yeah, the and I took a. I told you that I took a THC pill and lost my mind in that. Yeah, but they'll do like that's a hotel. Like the elevators, you have to walk down three hallways yeah, to, get to get to your out. room. Yeah, you go mm -hmm. boom, boom, and around. And it's, and, and, and it's anything like that. Almost like they were just watching a, a clip from The Shining here, but like. When those hallways, they have like, it's like just like zigzag. Like the, the carpets are always so eerie and shit. Yeah. And you're just walking back and you're like, it's just so like it's too much. A moment in time. In, uh, in, in Greenville, South Carolina, the hotel asked me, they came in. It was hot as shit there. And I had the AC on. Yeah. And in the middle of the day, the guy started pounding on my door, mm -hmm. the maintenance guy. And I go, yeah. He goes, because I had to check your uh, AC. I go, it's working fine. It's fine. He goes, yeah. He goes, but they're complaining downstairs, like yours is it's like dripping. Is dripping onto mm -hmm. their thing. I go, okay, fine. He comes over and he like takes Turns the thing it off, off <laughs> takes the thing it. off, and he says, he goes, he goes, <laughs> he goes, would you mind leaving it off for a while? So I was like, yeah, of course, yeah, of yeah. course I'm like, what are you fucking nuts? We're South Carolina. Mm -hmm. well, he's just like the idea that you goes goes. Hey, could you be uncomfortable for a while? They're complaining about a drip. I'm like, move their room. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jay, I hate to uh, yeah, stop here, <laughs> but the shining. Oh, what? The video in the hotel where, like, the ghost leaves the room. Those are always faked. You dumb Wait, idiot. let's see it. There's like Is there a video of a ghost turning on a speakerphone? Because then I'll probably go shit and cry at the same time. No. But I, I, I sleep with TV on every night. 
I can't sleep without it. I'm bl- I'm baffled that you don't have a TV in your bedroom. That no, I know. This mind. is when uh, this is yeah. This is the scary stuff. The following footage was recorded on hotel security September fourth, two thousand and three. It has not been edited. Uh, you should be in number two hundred three. Uh, John, do you copy? It's room two hundred nine. Is this a paranormal witness or paranormal? um, And there's reports of screaming coming from that room. Also, uh, could you pick me up some uh, some dipping dots from down in the store, or some of those those dips, (laughs) those Nestle dips, nips? This is going to creep me out already. Uh, I kind of look like like that guy. (laughs) It looks like Dave coming back from a cigarette. It looks like a a worked out me. So this is a video of apparently a haunting in a hotel, and I'm glad that I'm off the road for two weeks after this. No, if he gets sucked through the door, fuck this shit. At the Bonfire SXM on Twitter, Instagram. I just always, this is always fake. This is always fake? Yeah. This is from 2003. Perfect. No, they're calling the police because they're screaming. No, I will not wait for the police. No, I would never do that. John, you're dumb. John, the door's gonna shut. Yeah, but John, why doesn't John turn ah. the lights on? Oh, there it is. Right? Was that yeah. it? Yeah, that was it. Or was it a little bunch of scene? pot smoke from the MTV Music Awards? <laughs> <gasps> Kanye West video. Mm-hmm. There it is. The ghost leaves. Is that it? I just have no... Oh, then, the, then it flickers? So you, you, now, I have no now, belief Now he's got to do his other job where he masturbates into the conditioner. Yeah. The free conditioner. <laughs> guys, guys, the body lotion's half full. i got to jizz real quick. You know the best... Uh, I've got to take it out on people. <laughs> one, of my, sucks. One, of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite hotel stories ever, and it's so great because it's so uh, telling. Kurt Metzger has been on the show several times now. Uh, everybody knows Kurt. Uh, he's so brilliant. Like, such a smart, smart, like, well-read guy. And just dumb about the weirdest things. And him and Nate were on the road together one time. You know the story, Dan? Yeah. Him no. and Nate were on the, on the road together. Oh, it's, yes, I do. It's one of the funniest things ever. And he goes, he goes, Nate, he goes, this thing says conditioner here, this little bottle. He goes, is that like lotion, like body lotion? And Nate just goes, it was such a ridiculous question. Nate just goes, yeah, buddy. It was, <laughs> it's conditioner for your skin. And Kurt goes, oh, great. And Kurt just rubs hair conditioner all over his body. <laughs> And then has to go jump in the shower again to realize that it doesn't doesn't work at all. That it just doesn't cut <laughs> off. We should stop watching ghost sightings because they're all fake. They, there's always a video debunking every one of them. Yeah, uh, let's so switch never... over to beheadings. Yeah, yeah, let's bring it up a notch. Those, those are real. real. <laughs> the real ghost story. At least those are real. Let's take uh, let's take our final break real quick. We'll be right back. It's the bonfire with Dave Attell. <laughs> And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. These new uh, videos, so social activism. It looks like a really bad tourism video for New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, are you promoting tourists? It's the bonfire. Sirius XM 95 Comedy Central Radio. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson. Dave Attell with us the whole show. And uh, Jay's daughter Isabella picking out the music. That was Beyonce's formation. It still is. It still is. What does it mean? Where, uh, now, why it means she... get your cracker ass to She's helium so in Philadelphia so... this Friday, September 2nd through Sunday, September 4th. Go check out David Tell at Helium in Philly for tickets Go and other tour dates. Go to davidtell.com and check out Big J on the Oddball Comedy Festival this year. This week you can catch him in Chicago and Detroit. Go to uh, get tickets at oddballfest.com. And, of course, uh, pick up his special live at Webster Hall. And then, um, I'm sorry if you're in Seattle, I will no longer be at Bumbershoot. Your news is just bad news. This is bad news. But I'm not going to be anywhere. I don't care. But it doesn't I matter. Don't... If you're missing him that much, you could always pick up a special, not special, available on iTunes and several other digital platforms. I am right under the air conditioning. Is that bad? I have it fucking kicking. Yeah, crank it. Do not change that. Do not change it. No, it's it is cool. hot in those hallways. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's just do a whole thing where I sound overexcited. <laughs> why do you have Why do you have frail black kid energy right now? The, like, why of, so cold in here? Black kid getting out of the pool. Why so cold? In here? <laughs> it's too cold in here. Those skinny friends. Um, it? she got in a bunch of shit, Beyonce, for these videos, right? Because it's like you know, is it another like kind of like you know, it's like 
white people don't care about black people in floods. Well, SNL did that great sketch the day Beyonce became black because of this video, which was actually a great <laughs> sketch. Yeah. And like all the white women are like, Beyonce is black? I don't know, man. The social, like, move, again, that was sort of the problem with the Prophets of Rage to me. It's like the, you know, he holds up a sign at one point that says nobody for president and all this stuff. And it's just, wow. So, just the social nonsense of it all. Like, so much dumb complaining. So much, so much dumb complaining going on. They're so, uh, like, the, I, 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 I want to talk to you, Soto. We never got to, into this, but, uh, I thought, did you hear about this at all, Dave? Colin Kaepernick, the quarterback for the 49ers. All right. He wouldn't stand He wouldn't stand for the American. Yeah, I saw that. For the uh, uh, preseason game against the Green Bay Packers. And his reason, bring up his quote. His quote was, uh, He doesn't stand for a country so that oppresses black people. Right. He said he doesn't want to stand up for a flag for a country. I, I'm, this is obviously just what I read. I'm not quoting. It's like it. he's a fucking gazillionaire. He's. Is he rich? Is he really rich? Yeah, he signed a oh, yeah. $121 million contract wow. with the Niners three years ago. So it's like, stand the fuck up for the goddamn thing. I didn't know you guys were such super patriots. Uh, but, uh, you know, well, see, here's the thing. I'm, I'm almost of the thing of like... Uh, no, because I, 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 I agree with you that you should at least stand for the flag. Well, you know, stand yeah. For the flag. Stand for the flag. This country's, I, a, this country's mm -hmm. afforded him the opportunity is why he's able to make that much money. Well, I remember when I was growing up, uh, a point guard for the... Uh, Denver Nuggets, Mahmoud Abdul Raouf, oh, yeah. would look yeah. into his hands during the national anthem. Oh, really? Where he would, he would do the Muslim, he would do a Muslim prayer mm -hmm. during the national anthem, and he caught a ton of shit in Denver. This was like '93. Oh, yeah, he caught a ton of shit for that. But it, it was almost like he did his own protest, but he still stood, mm -hmm. like he stood in the line. Here's the thing with Kaepernick: uh, it's his First Amendment right. If yeah, he he's wants to, to do he's it, yeah. allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't think he should be forced to do that. Mm -hmm. If he wants to do that, he's going to catch all the public shit. He should know that he's just going to be beaten publicly. But why is he? I don't think he's being beaten by it. Well, they're like, yeah, why they're like make... burning his jersey. They're like, oh, oh fucking, are they? yeah, they're going like, why should going, But why shit. is he, why him? Why is he the person who wants to take this well, stupid here, fucking Because he thing. sees himself as, as the, you know... But as, here's here's the thing. As a 49er as fan, a idol, if, if a it was model. Tory Smith, or if it was like a guy that's like really good, mm -hmm. then it's like, like when Muhammad Ali stands up, you're like, oh, maybe there's some... So but when it's a guy that's falling down the depth chart, you're kind of like, are you just yeah, mad that you're not playing? Or? Even with, <laughs> look, look, you know, no one loves Iverson more than me, but when that news came out, again, he says it wasn't even true, but when the first news was like... He kicked his wife out of the house butt naked. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. remember that story? No. He kicked her out of the house butt naked. So he said, and you, you hear that, or you know, they found him with guns in his car and all that kind of shit. I'd all, my, my thing wouldn't be like, he's Alan Iverson, let him do whatever he wants. It really wouldn't be like, oh, dude, why are you yeah. fucking up when you have all well, this see, great opportunity? And I love him. He's my favorite athlete ever. Here's the whole thing about Colin Kaepernick. As a diehard San Francisco 49er fan, you've, I've kind of watched him fuck up a couple times that I didn't know, I didn't even know this quote. I just saw, I watched the game, and mm -hmm. then they brought up the picture, and I was like, oh, he, I thought, I was mad at him for sitting down, because I thought he was pissed about not playing. But and I'm like, he's, he's a dick. He's, he's half black, right? Yeah, he's, he's so half he black. He should have just kind of raised, like raised by half sat, yeah. sat down. He should have kneeled. Yeah, yeah he should have, yeah, yeah, crouching. Crouching, like. yeah. Colin Kaepernick Crouch. crouches <laughs> during National Anthem. Well, he was adopted by a white family. But how does it make for the other guys on the team feel? Which is like, yeah, I'm for the country that oppressed blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it kind of makes you're, them, if like you're a, one of his teammates. You're like, so what does that make us? Does that make us fucking? It must have been really awkward at the Red Lobster victory dinner. <laughs> oh, they lost. <laughs> so there was no Red Lobster. There was no oh. cheese biscuit. What's weird? They still celebrate. They don't give a shit. Hey, they, uh, they lost. I, I went to an Eagles don't. after party after a loss. They don't care. Okay. Um, they don't care. They don't care. I cared more than anybody in that room that they lost, that they were out of the playoffs from that game. I remember they we were there to trying that to game. pick up bitch, bitches and shit. They didn't care didn't at all. did Nate's dad get you tickets? Yes, or? he did. That's when we met the guy who's on Kicking Ass on America's Got Talent now, the magician, long, long snapper. Mm hmm. But, the, Amer uh, the American flag burning. I thought that was uh, the Middle East. You know, I, I didn't think but, we were doing that. But so. this, but this thing with the guy with Colin Kaepernick, like bailing. You know what it is? Again, I'm never that emotional about the. You know the uh, national anthem mm -hmm. or the flag. I'm not. I'm not very emotional. About I, I can get emotional. I always it. do it. I say, yeah, but you know what will make me emotional? And this happened. So last night <laughs> at that Prophets of Rage show, the DJ plays like the before the band comes out. He does plays Jimi Hendrix mm -hmm. national yeah. anthem, Star yeah. Spangled Banner, and um, 
and everyone stood and like you know like respected it. However, there's when I see guys, there's a lot of and you just assume they're military guys. I assume mm -hmm. some degree, yeah. but guys that actually did the thing because you know it's a state's an arena. It was Barclays Center. So there's the flag is hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. And like a lot of guys turned away from the stage to face the flag and actually do the whole like. Yeah, you know, they salute it. I see that at football games all the time. Like yeah. Some people really give a shit about that. And it almost makes me feel like, oh, maybe I should give a little more of a shit. Like, yeah, thank God I don't live in a fucking like uh, Serbia or some crazy shit like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and so as I'm saying, so Colin Kaepernick, who's like the, uh, uh, the quintessential example of a guy who this country has worked out fantastic. Right. For him, like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. Wow. Oppresses black people. It's like get the fuck out of here. I I think it's like, a it's like you know this, wrong place, wrong time kind of thing. Or you know, you know, at that point, I was like, I don't know. It's like I mean, if you're gonna like do something, like, have more of a point by being like, I'll boycott like a police officer, play. a police officer's fucking funeral because you think the police are yeah m murdering black people at an alarming rate. He I just joins. That. He but joins to, uh, as a role to model to turn on the country. Like mm -hmm. to turn on the it's like I don't I don't respect this country. Like. Yeah, It'd be good. funny if Keep he your just, money back. If he went all the way and joined the Westboro Baptist Church. <laughs> he's like, turns out Kaepernick's also protesting gay Marines funerals. And he's throwing <laughs> paint on people who wear fur coats. There has never been a bad documentary about the Westboro Baptist Church. You know Church. what's so funny about that, though? How like, many members do they have now? They're down to like three members, right? Yeah, it's pretty low. The leader going, died. They're going strong. They're a tag team in the WWE now. I think it's like one daughter and like her like boyfriend. I yeah. She's like, do you believe it? He's like, I believe it if uh, she'll fuck me. The <laughs> second she Going on love thing. Those documentaries with those kids when they the the, the kids that were the Westboro Baptist Church yeah. kids would get like shit thrown at them too by like, mm -hmm. drive by like people throwing sodas at them. Oh, that really and fucking kids, makes it better. And the kids have no, they don't understand. Yeah, they're like I felt so bad for the kids. They're like, yeah, the kid because the kids are. By the way, they're saying like all the same racist shit, but with such a confused tone of like. Isn't this what we're supposed to yeah, do and right. say? Yeah, and the parents are like, why, an is that, why did that man? Why did that man just throw? That's a white guy. That why guy did he just throw a full sweeps at me? <laughs> Every home is different. In my house, we ate dessert before supper. <laughs> yeah, these people are <laughs> drop dead racist. Mine, we always put placemats down before anything was served. Uh, you know what it is? Back to the Kaepernick thing, though, is as a fan and as someone who's followed the 49ers for a long time, he's not a political guy. Mm. So this comes out of nowhere. Well, that's another thing. Like, so it's like it's people. Like, Are you doing it for your attention? Yeah. Because people... you're not a political guy. In fact, uh, I remember one time going to a 49er game and talking to someone that works in the organization, and they were like, he's too obsessed with Instagram hoes. And, <laughs> and I went to his Instagram, and all he followed were butt models that we talked about. You think a butt model told him? She goes, if, hey, you, don't stand up, if you don't stand up for the national anthem, I'll suck your dick. Guess what? This butt don't jiggle if you put your hand over your heart for the national <laughs> anthem. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think he's going to, uh, I think he already has a bad rap. Do you think he's going to commit to this? No. You think next next no. time he stands up? Yeah, of course. Well, most people like who, like, you know, America. And if he does, is, it'll go a couple weeks. And people need to travel a little bit more. Like when you said Serbia and stuff like that, people should go to these other countries. And then they kind of like, it would kind of diffuse some of this, like, you know, because um, we live in a bubble and we yeah. live in this world of, you know, like we all hate each other. But honestly, you go to a place where like, you know, you order a pizza, and they have no idea what you're ordering, yeah. and then they say they're going to show up, and then, like, two guys show up and, like, steal your car or something. Like, or take your daughter. <laughs> yeah, like some kind of thing like that, where you're like, whoa, I guess it's not so bad in America. That's yeah, the whole thing. It's like, I think people don't really, like, the perspective. If they go know? to, like, Brazil, and they realize that kidnappings are real things and not just a Liam Neeson Dude, movie. The bands, yeah. the bands that I toured with yeah. told me, flat out, they go... Uh, uh, talk about corrupt play. If you fly to Russia mm -hmm. as a band, they know they see you coming with all the equipment and stuff. Mm -hmm. They go, you be prepared to, to give twenty thousand dollars right. to the guys at the at the border because they're not going to let you. They'll, they'll just they'll just fuck with you. You'll have they to just, buy your equipment. They'll back. just say they'll just say yeah. They'll go. They'll go. Yeah, we got to check run the stuff with customs. You're not going to get out of here, and you got to give them twenty grand. Jeez. And then they just go, yeah. All right, go ahead, go. And I'm proud to be an American. You know what's weird too? At least my quarterbacks can see it. <laughs> well, that's that's uh that's funny that like it's the one sport where like there's only like two places where they play it, like Canada and America. Yeah, so. yeah, but if he was in soccer, then he'd be like, I can I can lose America. I have so many other I'm countries. I'm going to play for FC yeah. Barcelona. <laughs> this one, he's like, uh, it looks like I'm going to be a Edmonton Eskimo next <laughs> season. Which actually probably might be 
Colin Kaepernick's career path if they don't fucking just dial him back to the well, CFL. He's got, he's that got dead that, arm he has. He played a little bit yesterday, but I don't well, know. that would get the most attention if he said like, "I'm going to play, I'm going to do everything, <laughs> but I'm not going to take the money of you, whatever." That, that's something that like, would be really. He goes, "I'm going to donate it all to like you know Black Lives Matter, or something or, like that." Yeah, or and goes like a but, defense but, fund for yeah, like wh- whatever it is. He's like, I'm going to take my yearly pay and buy seven billion Black Lives Matter T-shirts, yeah, yeah. and then I'm, I'm going to buy the Oscar factory, yeah. and I'm going to make it look more urban, and I'm going to drop them all over Baltimore and everyone's going to feel it's gonna like if he did something like that then people are like wow this guy this guy he's not going to take the money then yeah. people would be like we better listen to him and but adopted it, by a white family it's like even more of a thing where it's like what's your tie to this that you're having this like well I, I bet you could find like an old Super Bowl package where it like shows from Super Bowl 47 where it shows Colin Kaepernick and like his super lily white brother and he's <laughs> like I just love Colin we, we got him when I was 10 and we're just <laughs> we together him. and it's like it's like his Ted yeah yeah. <laughs> we picked him up. He came to life. And all of a sudden, he had a cannon arm. And he could fly, he could, run, he could th- uh, throw on the run. It was pretty amazing. It's just, I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't get that. Like, I, I really was, like, pretty appalled by it. And I'm far from, like, a, yeah. you yeah. know, a, a, like a toting, a, you know, like a, like, Super like, patriot. Oh, like high horse patriot, yeah. I was, I was more like a dejected inner city principal where I was kind of like, ah, Colin, what are you doing? <laughs> nah. Just on, like, just like there's, there's people outside of the concert yesterday because of like, you know, it being that. Chance the Rapper! That of it being Prophets of Rage type thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, there was really, there's a people outside with a whole like, you know, pro-communism. We need to, we, like the people in this country need to like overthrow the government. Like we need to rise up and again, it's like, where, what do you think is fucking happening here? Like, the over-exaggeration of people's concerns mm-hmm. of who's going to become president. Do you think, that, do you think that's it's like... It's like a, the world's going to spin the same fucking... America's going to be pretty much the same. Our secret prisons will no be matter, fully operational regardless. But, do you get what I'm saying? But even yeah. take the conspiracy out of it. Just the fact oh. that, like, the, our country is just... With all that, there's corruption in politics in every single... Like nation, right? But here, sometimes I actually admire the uh, the transparency and like but here, African warlords. Yeah, uh, but you know, what I'm saying, but I'm saying with all the with, even with the all focus the focus they have, even with all the shit. He, as I said, the Rev. dot com through yeah. those mirrored sunglasses. He, even with all the shit going with the corruption in politics here in America, when there's corruption in politics anywhere, aren't you happy that? When there's corruption in politics here, at the end of the day, you're still in America. You can still, like, you know, like... Right. Oh, go like, to you, sleep. You're not worried about a soldier kicking in your thing and yes. taking your daughter? Well, the one the one thing, because uh, I was, you know, uh, I'm old, so I watched, like, CNN. You ever get one of those, like, you watch like, CNN all day long, and it's yeah. like, first Hillary speaks, and yeah. then Trump has to respond, and then she responds. So it was, like, one of these things where it's like... Um, Trump's like, you know, we're going to, you know, I think he was in West Virginia. He's talking about the coal miners and, and he's like, we're going to create jobs and we're going to, or no, I think it was Hillary actually. He goes, we're going to create jobs and you guys are going to go back in the coal mines and you can hear this like weak, yay. Like <laughs> nobody wants to go in a coal mine. I thought you were going to bring more rental car <laughs> units yeah. so I could be a manager of a. Yeah, no, it's hearts. all. It's I'm going to make sure you guys can get black lung the rest of the Yeah, no, it's like these lives. jobs. Nobody wants to do jobs. Nobody yeah. wants, that's why. Powerball is so big. In the yeah. Nobody wants to work. This, and the people who have the greatest jobs, everybody thinks that like they're like they're experts in everything. They're not. Yeah. It's like just because you ha- you know like what at the MTV Award, I'm sure we're going to hear a, a lot of things about what's wrong with America. Oh, guys, how do we fix one of the most complicated systems yeah. of democracy ever? Fat Joe, like take it away. Where do, yeah. How do we fix America? Fat Joe, what's with the cap and trade uh, policy? Go do ahead. you think China? Do you think we should keep liens on China? <laughs> Ashanti has just shown up. Ashanti, what do you think of de-arming Syrian rebels? That is that that is such a fantastic maybe one of my favorite Dave Chappelle jokes of all time. When he does uh when he was when nine eleven happened, he he was just like frazzled by the whole thing and just sitting in his house all day and he turned on T V and they were like uh you know, there goes so so the Tower Seven just fell and uh he goes the the, the Country's in upheaval. He goes, we have a jaw rule. Oh, yeah. like, jaw rule. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, and he goes, man. He goes, I'm scared as a as a nation. He goes, I may have some questions. The jaw rule doesn't have the answers. <laughs> and, yeah, he goes, uh, and he goes, and the thing of his life has he ever been crying. He goes, oh man. He goes, please, somebody get jaw rule to make sense of all of this. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of where we're at is the, in the celebrity worship 
culture we live in now. Now people are lofting like major questions to celebrities that really have no fucking clue what they're talking and about. Then look, but the celebrities and seem to step up thinking they do know. Well, you yeah. know why? Because they're, that all, to me is they're the most insulated by yes men all the time. So then so. whenever they're like, I got a theory on this, they're like, yeah, you should say that. That's Sometimes they do it, man. Like celebrities got those fucking West Memphis 3 dudes out of jail. Yeah, but those guys did the and research kid, and they that hired that lawyers. Kid, yeah, they weren't there in the library. Was, that kid like. was going to get executed. Yeah, but that you do understand that it's like that's uh that's an outlier case. I'm talking about sure. like we're doing this on the red carpet and they're just firing political questions mm. at people. They're like, "You played a mannequin who came to life." Mm. And she's like, "I did." What do you think of Chechnyan rebels? <laughs> and she's like, "I think <laughs> guns." But really like an idiot like an Amber Rose really and they have I'm not they, supposed to be they, clapping away on uh, terror. But, but they say but they say they do say shit like that, you know what I mean? It's like Yeah. You know, it's like terrorists. He goes, he goes, terrorists is bad. We should get rid of all of them. He goes, but that one was cute though, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that that one that blew up that them people in Boston was cute, even though I'm pretty sure that was a conspiracy theory and they were on the FBI payroll for 17 months before that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He cute though. He cute though. I be reading up a lot of shit. That's why I was. Is that know? little Kim? No. <laughs> little not, Kim looks strange. Little Kim's days. free. She's not, she's not the same person anymore. Um, that might be little Kim. I was I was wondering like how sensitive you know like like the the music awards I'm sure they must have like some kind of who they what <laughs> that's Beyonce <laughs> oh my god she, like she didn't hit the makeup chair yet who the fuck is that I, hey young man is this bad grandma what is <laughs> yeah, it we gotta put this on <laughs> young man young man I want to watch I you urinate first I won't stand for a flag of a country that doesn't <laughs> puts down black. <laughs> We're watching the red carpet of the MTV Movie Awards or Music Awards. They're all they're all in the background. Phyllis Diller's up for Fluffer <laughs> of the Year. Yeah, <laughs> that's got to be somebody dressed, <laughs> young man. I want to watch them kiss. And I swear to you, the fruity dude is taking over the man. Oh, dude, I gotta say this, man, on the subway ride here. Yeah. Who is that guy? I saw a lot of high shorts. I apologize. There's yeah. no way I could ever do that. It's bad. It's bad. For guys? Yeah. Uh, we, There's a lot of I, I, guys I, out there wearing very high shorts. I went shorts. to the Soho house okay. today. How many okay. men right. How many men were wearing like that, with that pool upstairs? I went to smoke a cigarette up there, and there was... like Every dude had on either like the French cut like bikini uh, wow. bathing suit or... Like very stylish, like half thigh bathing suits. Go was, on, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was it was really like boys, boys, <laughs> what? Boy, girls, girls, girls. Uh, what is how many hot chicks were at the Soho House though? So many. Oh my! What were you so doing there? Much. Big power had, deal. Had brunch. Ooh. No, no. I took Isabella and Carla and, and Christine. We went to brunch with Wayne and Ray, and then of course we leave there. Wayne, you bring Wayne and Ray to anything, which I love. Uh, Wayne's in a, f- a fight. He's arguing about something not going well, and then Ray says everyone's racist, <laughs> and then we get. And then, <laughs> so he was like, "All right, I guess we should go." <laughs> so we should probably. Leave. So uh, I've been there twice, and every time I always that one smoking area we can go. Yeah, upstairs. They're ba- the but room. I'm always blundering into like a guy English, like half English story. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I say, yeah. you know, like uh, I was over there for a holiday, <laughs> and no, I no but the guy is English, so no. he's an English guy who lives in New York. But it's his story, you yeah, know. about London time. But I think it's really more about like uh, now I'm trans- English. Yeah, I was <laughs> transporting again. <laughs> oh. No, you never meet an English guy like that. It's always the yeah. high end, oh. the uh, <laughs> you know, the, the is what- this lift going up or down? Down. Yeah, the BBC One type, yeah. you know, the news guy. Coming in the Queen likes to go there on holiday, as opposed to, I've got a BMW loaded with heroin. <laughs> I love I've that I've got voice. to get it. I've got Sexy to get it to voice. Detroit. That's the, the roof. There's the roof right there. Ooh. Yeah, there was a lot Beautiful. of hot box. Yeah, my For classy sure. and shit. Yeah, if any girl on that uh, on that roof had pubes, I'd have seen a bunch. No, oh, they yeah. were in like those tiny bikinis. Oh boy, yeah, mm. there were some nicies. I'll never swim at that pool. There's yeah, not that a would be fucking chance. Can we buy old timey one piece bathing suits and go swim there? Like strong men from the twenties. Yeah, like like yeah. literally one like male one bathing straps. suits. Like one strap. Hello, gals. Don't mind if I take a dip. Let's put our swim caps yeah. on. Yeah, that'd be cool if you were rich enough that you could like you know you can go up there and like have your swim, but you pay everyone to look the other way. <laughs> <laughs> like, Don't look just, at me. Your butler goes around with money. Yeah, Mister. It's a hundred bucks to just look. 
look out. Mr. Soda will be doing a lap. Yeah. When he swims back, you may look at the pool, not him. I want to come out in the Rodney Dangerfield back to school. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm going to do the triple windy. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever heard of this. Cannonball, you rich queefs. <laughs> Everybody, put your hand over your drink. I'm about to do a cannonball. That's so. That's like one of the few movies where they have to bleep the setups. Because yeah. you know, everything ends with, like, you know, like, uh, quack. Yeah. Uh, you, know. <laughs> you know what they say about a Jewish doctor. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, I want to see. You should have snapped some photos. I bet you they have a no photo. Policy. I'll tell you what we will have. Uh, uh, Rob May will send it to me. Is I will definitely have video of the guy who I said I've never seen enjoy something as much as he was enjoying that concert last night. We oh. do have video of him. Like you have the oh, video of the cool. guy taking I his shirt mean, off. Wailing. He's I mean, a hero. He was going okay. for it. He is a he hero. Is. I need a hero. Uh, Soho House really is very very pish posh. Not my scene at good all. Good food. Don't you have to have a, like Food a membership? To I think you're a member. I have yeah. a membership. Yeah, you have Whoa. a membership to Soho House. Yeah, this is your American not sitting down. How you know dare what? you not stand for the for the common <laughs> no, man? I would definitely stand up for the. For the <laughs> what do you? How, what do you do with the membership there? We went to brunch today, okay. and, I, and, I, and then I looked at a pool that I'll never go in. Wow, you're, yeah, like you're, sad go in. you're like a sad millionaire. All oh, this is don't they have? Don't they have a like fugs can swim? <laughs> Great. All right, all you, yeah. all, all you swim. monsters, <laughs> all you monsters <laughs> in the pool. From five to six p.m. is fug swim, <laughs> guys. It's time for swamp swim. All right, models and the twinks that brought them here, yeah. get away. There's Everyone, gonna be some ugly all looking you, people. All you pretty people, go into the cocaine room. Yeah, go to the cocaine <laughs> cabana. Here comes all the body fat. Put all the body fat in the pool. Put a towel over your head quickly. It, it really, They're coming up. I feel like it really is. It's like, it's, like, it's like actors, actresses, and singers get out. Yeah, yeah. And, and all producers, directors, yeah. whatever, yeah. come in. But that's what it is. That's the difference right there. Everybody that looks like they might wear grip gets to swim. <laughs> the right? people who really need a fucking, swim. There were some amazing I fucking bodies there, man. Bah, you got to take me there so I can look at all bah. the bodies. Look at all these bodies. I want to go there on a Sunday and just wear my fucking jean shorts and a fucking tear-off shirt. Let's go, let's go next Sunday for breakfast. Brunch. Done, bro. I'll just do it. Uh, I don't know if you've heard this, but I'm not going to be at Bummer Shoot in Seattle. So. Well, I believe uh, if, if God willing, Oddball Tour happens this weekend. <laughs> uh, then you can go get tickets at oddballfest.com and check out Big J this Friday in Chicago and Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, I don't believe I'm doing Toronto. Who's on the show? Can you tell everybody like who's on it? Maybe this would help promote Sebastian. It. Sebastian Maniscalco. Uh, Hannibal Barris is on that one. Brian this Regan. Weekend. This weekend, you go to this weekend. Let's see. I'll tell people who's on. Gabriel Iglesias. You, know, you go up top to the menu, and it'll give you where it says dates. Dates. Hold up. Are you allowed to talk about this? Because I of think course. we'll be good to see yeah, who's yeah. on. So yeah, this this weekend, every show is going to be uh, John Sebastian, Will Brian Regan, John Mulaney uh, are the three mains, and then we have Cameron Esposito, Donnell Rawlings. Eli Hello, Eliza mm -hmm. Schlesinger, Tom Segura, Tony Hinchcliffe. Uh, Jeff Ross and me. That's a lot of show. That sounds like a great ticket. It's a great ticket. No, okay. So go to oddballfest.com and get tickets. And if you're in Philadelphia, go check out David Tell at Helium this Friday through Sunday. I love that. I love that club and that city is, I, I'd have to say it's in my top 10 of comedy cities. Yeah. It's great crowds. It is great. It's great unbelievable. I don't I, say, that's crowds I, there are like, you can, you know, they really love when you push it. And that's I, why I, like I taped that. my special there. Cause yeah. It's like, it's fuck it. Do it. They're they, not offended. They at are. All. Yeah, it's a big market. It's a big market for the show. And I love helium. For this show, helium, they treat you right. They I'm talking really about are. the gas. I'm a big <laughs> fan of the lighter than air Hi, gas. Everybody. Hey, it's the helium man. Um, we keep going back to these little fruitcakes. I like how they all kind of look like they don't want to be pi taking pictures of when Isn't that like why, you know? Yeah. I, I come did on. not become a Madrid. Who are these people? <laughs> Isabella, who are these people? I did not become He's an actor. A DJ for... <laughs> Isabella, who are these people? The guy before was a gay YouTuber. Okay. Oh, really? Oh, I, I, an internet sensation. By the way, that sounds like a good slanderous term for us. Like, what are you, a gay YouTuber? <laughs> uh, that and that guy is on a... Love and Hip Hop. Oh, of course. Oh, is she the love part or the hip hop part? Don't get her started. Oh. <laughs> is all, Isabella, is her hair real? 
Okay. That would take a long time. And who is that weird make-a-wish looking? uh, That's that's the gay YouTuber. Oh, sorry. Who are these (laughs) children? Uh, That's their parents. This is Steven Seagal and uh, his third (laughs) wife, uh, you know, Marie. This is Kat Seagal. (laughs) Don't mess with her. I'll break your forearm. I love these unaffected kids, too. He goes, this is my life. Uh, Can you believe it? (laughs) I was supposed to be watching a movie with my best friend, but now we're just stupid. I I hate Lear Jets. I I hate them. I I have to do a step and repeat when I really wanted to play in my sandbox <laughs> it really is like a what are these who things? are those I like it. that guy's probably like you know uh, you know him he's know, the uh, national people. salesman for Jose Cuervo you know, <laughs> you know like some guy like really big money or super yeah. dangerous he's yeah. a financier from Israel well, what's this about oh shit she's is got a bomb Star Trek Voyager oh uh, who's, who's that Isabella she's uh, also a YouTuber who are all these oh, YouTubers she? I don't know why they're all here oh this is so hilarious you know, oh, she's uh, pretty, you, know, yeah. you know in Montreal one of the comics to watch in Montreal for the variety thing yeah. was uh, I think two of them were fucking just YouTubers cool not even See? comedians that, li- that Lily Singh good pick Ridiculous. Good pick. I'm really good. Who's Colin? this? Colin. Isabel, who's this? Eyebrow That's bitch. <laughs> is she a winter princess? That's Cat Dahlia. Why is she wearing Under Armour under her dress? <laughs> wow. She has chain mail on? This, this looks like the uh, waiting to get into the cellar line now. Yeah, that, oh was, that, was, like a, that was like a heroin dealer and the girl he deals heroin to. I feel like I'll wake up in one of their torture pits. But look, they're YouTube nobodies, essentially. And look how calm, like, calm they're into confident it, yeah. they are. Yeah, but they're like, of course we're here. Yeah. Of course. And you know who should be there? Some serious nobodies. <laughs> we should Us. be there. We should be there. I tried um, to get tickets for Isabel to go today. I tried so many times to get tickets. You cried? To go to the MTV Awards? Try. Yeah, I was going to try. I, I tried next to year. get tickets through Wayne, through the art thing. Then yeah. Dad tried to get tickets. Then Olivia tried yeah, to get tickets. Yeah, but the problem was, was it was all today. It was all today. You should have gone through your old buddy that was on a little thing called Guy Court. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Dan You forgot Soder. to call Dan Soder, who was a, a lawyer me. on Guy Court. Uh, I was two and two in Guy Court, so I'm pretty sure they take my calls. <laughs> and that's that was a tough judge, Donnell Rawlings. I'll tell you this. That, who is this guy? nonsense Donnell Rawlings judge. Who's he? Who's he? A Disney actor. Is he, is he the new Spider-Man? Who's no. the Prince of Mumbai? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have a question. Are, are they going to have an actual musician come up at some point? There Whoa. we go. Is that, is that two chains? Is that Booker T? I thought he worked in the Wah Band. That's yeah. two chains, right? Yeah. Two chains. Two chains. I just know the name from WorldStarHipHop.com. He looks like yeah. So if you met him on the, let, let's say you met him on the street or something like that, I crossed the street. I wouldn't meet him. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Would that you guy. go? Oh, hey, two chains. I mean, would you say that? Nicki Minaj. Ah, uh, why is she being let out like a prize golden <laughs> retriever? Someone's got to hold her ass Nicki up. Nicki Minaj. Yeah. Cause she's why? Nicki Minaj. That she's makes beautiful. no sense though. Cause she's fabulous, bitch. <laughs> Work. <laughs> is that what you just say that? Work. She is. She is hot as hell though. Yeah, her fake. Butt. She's not even really ready nice. yet. Look, she has her stylist on the carpet. Isn't that crazy? Her, weave. her uh, science. Her science butt is very nice. It's crazy. <laughs> Good science butt, Nikki. She was a church girl. She grew up right. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the backstory. Yeah. Like, there it had us in the cloud. And they did have that. Uh, it's at the last. It's the last thing of Shush time today. But uh, the, oh yeah, her body is fantastic. Boom. But, uh, but that last thing of Shush time has that thing we were looking for the Kim Kardashian thing, Dan. Like her body, like now it, which oh, is, yeah. it's just cartoonishly not good. It looks like she's holding on because her butt's too heavy. <laughs> she's like, I, I'm going to collapse. She's like, do I still have to hold this? Uh, why did they give me a lead butt implant? <laughs> I'm carrying around. My quads are shot. <laughs> when she sits down, just goes, ting. Yeah. <laughs> ting, ting. As her butt cheeks hit. Ting, oh, wow. Ting. Oh, no, it's not. It's, wow. it's, it's on shoes time. It's the last thing on shoes time. Like, her butt looks like two little kids. Oh, wait, it is her kids. <laughs> oh, it is her children. <laughs> Uh, Mommy. Dave, David Tell, thank you very much for coming well, on the show. Thanks for having me in, guys. And uh, uh, congratulations on uh, over a year of great radio. You are our first guest, and you are always welcome back on the Bonfire. Check out David Tell at Helium in Philadelphia this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Go to David, davidtell.com for tickets, and then go check out Big J on the Oddball Tour, oddballfest.com. He's going to be in Detroit and Chicago this weekend. Uh, go get your tickets, and also download a special live at Webster Hall on iTunes. And I'm sorry if you're going to Bummer Shoot and you were planning on seeing me. Me in Seattle. I will not be there this weekend. Um, but uh, dancer.com for other dates. Dancer.com for his dates and get his special, not special, available on yes, iTunes and awesome several other special. formats. It is an awesome special. And if you really want to catch him live, you can see me and him just 
creep staring at Box at the Soho House next time. I'm going to have some cut-off jean shorts and a Macho Man t-shirt on. Uh, dude, we should dress ridiculous and just go. 100%. Let's just go up I'll, there. I'll cut up some old jeans. I don't give a shit. I just got to go get up there. Get those just... fugs in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> get in there. Let them get wet. <laughs> wet fug time. Fug splash. Hug them. <laughs> hose them down and feed them. Uh, Dave, love you, man. Thanks for hanging Thanks out with us, buddy. And uh, We love you guys. You guys are the best friends. We'll catch you next week on the bonfire. Crackle, crackle.